Hey everybody, my name's Jason Day. This I'm is Meg Day. And we are Burnt Finger Barbecue. We're here at the Big 12 Big, Chew, Big Q Barbecue Camp Competition at the Big 12 Tournament presented by Prairie Fresh. We've got 12 of the best pitmasters in the country here, courtesy of the National Barbecue League, that are going head to head for the title of the Big Q or Big 12 Big Q Championship. And we are here today to give you some behind the scenes looks at what's happening, how they're doing this, and why they're doing it. I think that's the most important part. We've been competing for a decade and have had the opportunity to compete in some of the biggest contests around the world. And now we're here to help you see what goes on and what's in the mind of these guys. That's right. We're gonna go in and out of each one of these guys' cook camp. We're gonna meet them ahead of time. And then as they cycle through each of the turn-ins today, we're gonna give you a behind the scenes look. We're gonna get up and close personal and ask them some of those questions about what they're doing, why they're doing, and we're gonna see them send their, their competition meets off to the judges. So. And we're really, really glad the sun has finally come out. It has <laughs> been freezing all week, but we are ready to roll and the sun is our friend. Should we go right. meet some of them? Let's go All meet right. Brad. Let's, let's head over here and let's talk to Brad. Brad, you're up. This is Brad with Getting Basted Barbecue. Good. Good. How are you doing today? Guest. We There's do a have a grand. special guest. Yeah, let me There's come in here. Bars. Let's come on in here. 2015, 16, 13. All right. So, Brad, Getting Basted, where are you from? Uh, from Branson, Missouri. And what team are you representing here in the Big 12 Big Q? Kansas State, of course. Kansas perfect, State. perfect. You know, other teams here? She is a wildcat. Huge. I don't know if you knew that or not. I did. I, Bleed I purple. I was sure she made you aware of that. Yeah. So what? Uh, what's your specialty? What are you cooking for us today? Man, I think I'm, my, what's looking really good so far is my brisket. So I'm hoping that's going to pull pull me through. You know, get the big meats in there. But everything's coming along good. Uh, cooking chicken legs today. I don't normally do that, so that's a little bit of a curveball in the competition world. But uh, any reason why you went legs this time? I just want to be memorable here. You know, I'm not, you know, a lot of times you know you're doing competition barbecue, you don't want to stand out uh, among this group of guys out here. I want the opposite. I want to stand out. I want to hit him in the face and make him know I was here. I get it. I get it. All right. Well, good luck to you. We'll be back in a little bit once you start getting into those secrets. All right. Thanks, Brad. All right. We're going to step on. We, we, got, we, got, we got Travis. We got Travis, Travis Clark with Clark Crew Barbecue. So we'll see if we can get back uh -oh. there real quick. I think he's, I think he's in, into some work. We're going to try and catch Travis Clark from Clark Crew. Can you come Crow. up here for us for a few minutes? Yeah. Oh, we're right here. So we got Travis Clark. What's the name of your team and where are you from? Uh, Clark Crew Barbecue. We're out of Yukon, Oklahoma. Excellent. And what team are you representing in the Big Q today? Uh, Oklahoma. Oklahoma. That makes sense. Yeah. So, well, rumor has it you're from Kansas, though. So you would think. <laughs> rumor has it you're working on a restaurant. Yep. Yep. We'll have it uh, open probably around. We're hoping like June first in uh, Oklahoma City, Excellent. right in the middle of it. And what would you consider your specialty? What's your number one category? You know, I don't know. Brisket and ribs have always been probably my best. And pork. I don't know. We're really, I got the same amount of wins in every one of them. So and I, brisket, that's probably what everyone likes the most, I guess. Yeah. And that's a lot of wins, right? I don't know. It's quite a few. <laughs> <laughs> Travis has been the Kansas City Barbecue Society's Team of the Year twice. Have you won every category Team of the Year? No, no. Uh, I haven't won chicken. So chicken? So maybe that's, that's one you can win today. I haven't won pork either. I haven't won pork. Uh -huh. I've been second, but not won it. That's pretty good. It's pretty dang close. What's that? Well, yeah, I'll just borrow it. one of Brad's though, if you want to see a trophy, I'll show you one. Is that who you're trying to beat today? You going after Brad? Nah, he'll beat himself. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Well, good luck today. All right. See ya. All right. I deserve that one. <laughs> we got Fergie. I'm behind you. What's up? How are you? Uh, you know, rolling, man. Rolling. Very good. Well, we have Richard Fergola. With Fergola. Fergola. We got it. Fergola. Mr. Richard, what is your category du jour today? Where are you feeling it now? I'm, I'm, I always feel it. All four categories, man. I, I don't. It's, it's, it's win, win or go home, right? You know. Yeah, if you ain't first, you're last. If you're not first, you're last. What right. are those four categories? Chicken, ribs, pork, and brisket. Great. Feeling pretty good about the brisket today, though. Very good. Feeling really good. What, what school are you representing? I am representing the University of Kansas. University, and they're still in it. The Jayhawks. The yep. Jayhawks are still going. Playing West Virginia tonight. Yep. So tell me, you are famous for being on the Pitmaster show. He and I were on Chop together the same season. Yeah. She won though. I didn't. <laughs> well, we did win. What was that dish that you you made that was famous? It's a barbecue salad. A barbecue salad. Yeah. The yeah. best salad in a the world. A stuffed trotter salad. That sounds delicious. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Sounds delicious. You're not making that today. I will not make that today. All right. Or ever, ever again ever in my again. life. Ever again. All right. Well, we thank you. We wish you a lot of luck. I know there's a lot of tough teams out here. Congratulations for being here. Yeah, thank All you. Right. Awesome. You're welcome. All right. See you. Bye. All right. Right in here. 
All right, I've got Boomerang Barbecue here representing Texas Tech. That's right. What do you, what do you guys have going on here? It looks like a, a little pan of goodness. Yeah, we got a little chicken going on. Chicken? Are you doing thighs like everyone else? Maybe. Doing a drum roll. Yeah. Drum roll? Drum roll. Uh -huh. We just heard, talked to Brad. He's doing doing some legs today, too. So we've got two folks doing chicken legs. So you guys just came off of an epic run for Kansas City Barbecue Society Team of the Year, landing in second place, only to Mr. Brad Leininger down here from getting basted. Is there any, any sentiment that you're going after him today? You're going to earn, earn something back a little bit? Wipe the tears. Well, yeah, but it is what it is. So we'll be cheering you on today. Yes, sir. All right, what category? So we, we see your chicken here. What, what are you looking forward to most? Brisket. Brisket? Yeah. That's where you're going From after? Texas. Oh, that's fair. That's fair. All right, good luck to you guys. Thank you. Thank you. All right. What, who we have right here is Luke Darnell from Old Virginia Smoke, and we've got you right in the middle of, of some action, so yeah. I don't want to take you away from it. Looks, okay. like, looks like you might be venting. Yes. What, is, what is it you're doing? Uh, we're letting some of the energy off of the pork. We just pulled it out. The very fresh pork. It's ready to go, ah. and uh, tastes really good. We just tried a piece. Fantastic. So. Yeah, we see you've got a closer here with you. Tell us a little bit about the young lady that's standing right here with you. This is my name, or my friend Bethany McAllister. She's with 913 Barbecue, and she's helping me out today. She's doing the chicken for us today, and she's one of the best chicken cooks in the world, so I'm glad to have her with me. And she's from right here in Kansas City, so you are lucky. Hey, you had to come in from, you're out near Washington, D.C. area. In Virginia, yes. Yeah. So we've got, we really did this, the National Barbecue League has pulled people in from all over the country who are the very best to be a part of this Big Q, uh, Big 12 Big Q, but also there will be competitions across the country that you're going to be competing in. What do you think your category today? What are you feeling? I feel like our pork is really good today, and I think our chicken, I feel really good about everything. We've had a really good cook so far, so just hope we keep up the momentum and hope it goes well. All right, All right. well, we appreciate it. Good luck. Congratulations for being here. That's yep. a big deal. All right, thanks. Go Mountaineers. <laughs>
they came all the way from across the street for state <laughs> from the St. Louis area. Super excited to have them here. You are known for your restaurants. Yep. That is that is what you do. You also do competitions and, and they do some of the biggest competitions in the country and we're happy to have you right here in Kansas City today. Tell me, you're cooking on this old hickory over here. Is that what you have in the restaurants as well? Yeah, we have bigger ones in the restaurants. Um, like, I mean, like a lot bigger. Yeah. But uh, this is like probably our second time cooking on this. Yeah. So. So tell me, what when I came up here, you've got sauce. Is this a secret sauce that you're using, or is this something that you've doctored up? Is this right from the restaurant? It's something that we've doctored up. Yeah, yeah it's something that we use for competition. We have our own sauces that we sell commercially, and Perfect. we put those in the stores. But this is just our competition secret sauce. It's mostly blue. Hog. Mostly blue hog. There it is. Secret That's it. Yeah, no, secret sauce. So. Yeah. Blues hog, and uh, I put in some of Mark Lambert's uh, sweet sweet mine sauce because I figure he probably so, some of the biggest good. yeah some yeah. of the biggest guys on the competition circuit. We just figure they know what they're doing, so yes. we just mix yeah. it all up and hope for a little bit of their you know their little love. I, <laughs> I love it. And what what's your halfway through your cook? What's what's you doing now? I think our chicken looks the best. Yeah. Um, I mean I don't know. It's so much different. Flavors and everything about it is. Yeah different from restaurant barbecue so you know these guys do it a lot more than we do but I, I feel like we're better we're chefs by training so I think we might have a little better palate so we might and we can make our boxes look better than them so that's where we might have an advantage but I mean but they win all the time I mean yeah. these guys are awesome we're just really happy to be out here and be cooking alongside them and stealing as many of their secrets as we can <laughs> this is the ultimate shigging opportunity and for those of you that don't know what that means shigging means getting in you act like you're just talking to them but the whole time you are inventorying every we're, single thing that is is there we're doing the opposite of whatever slaps does opposite of slaps so yeah. key that's the key there oh he can't even so find his gloves opposite. yeah i love it all right well thank you for coming today lots of luck to both of you thank you yeah thanks Here we go. Nope. Just burn my and have a boat ride, get it? Have a boat ride out. Okay. Alright, check your the butt. Alright, I have right here the tallest man in barbecue, Tim Shear. I might actually be the shortest man in barbecue, so I had to get up on a cooler here to get up to your height. So what are you what are you cooking today? Well, we know what you're cooking. What team are you representing today? Uh well we're representing uh Oklahoma. The uh, Oklahoma State alum actually on a team, so we're authentically representing the Cowboys. Excellent, excellent. We just had a pretty tasty bite of your brisket here and a nice little saltiness on it. What are you going to do? Are you going to add some maybe some sweet sauce to that to help counter it off? I'm definitely not going to add any more salt, okay? <laughs> so, we, you know, what we do in, in brisket, especially at the end of the turn-ins, you know, the judges have already been eating three categories worth of meat, so we tend to push the uh, salt level a lot at the end but we counteract that with a little bit of sweet blues hog on the top of it to glaze it up, shine it up, and, and balance that saltiness out, yeah. but still give it a good pop of flavor. Excellent, excellent. Blues hog seems to be common around the teams here. Is there, is there a reason for that? Well, I think it's the reason is it wins a lot, and judges, um, they say they don't like it, but I think they do. <laughs> they do. You know they what do. I mean? So um, I'm not going to argue with that. You know, the other thing is these guys are cooking good good food, so they could probably um, they could probably put anything on it and win, but, but the – the number one thing you got to do is cook it right, hit your tenderness, hit your moisture, and uh, hit your texture and everything, make it look good enough to get an eight or a nine in appearance, and you're going to be right in there. Excellent, excellent. So tell us a little bit about the pitch you're running back here. Yeah. I've got a couple different sizes here. Looks like Boatwright's in on some ribs at the moment. Yeah, Boatwright's digging in. He's doing the dirty work right now. We've got <laughs> the Gateway Drum Smokers. Obviously, we make these and produce them in Washington, Missouri. Um, you know, we cook hot and fast on them. We started at 7 a.m. this morning. Uh, with the brisket, actually put the br brisket on this new uh, uh, drumzilla, as, I see, that thing's a as we got got going on here. So, you know, we light it up. This is a, about an 85-gallon drum. It's a 26-inch wide grate. Um, first time we ever lit a fire in it was today. So 
We'll see what happens, but so you have far. anything in it right now? Um, chicken's on it right chicken's now, there? which Excellent. Uh, Excellent. just forgot about. We probably need to pull it off. Um, but what, anyway. what, category, what category do you want to win most today? Yes. All of them? Yes. All of them? Excellent. Yeah, I, think Excellent. It's take, I think it's going to take a, probably at least a top five in every category to get a yeah. win for sure. Maybe take more than that. If you could only pick one person to be better than here today, just beats one person, who would it be? Well, obviously Brad, but that's kind of getting old. You know, I'm kind of getting tired of beating him every time. So I don't know, man. I'd probably pick um, – I'd probably pick uh, Travis. He is fun to beat, but I don't really, really beat him very often. So that would be cool. Uh, I'd love to beat Johnny Trigg for sure. Excellent. Uh, we got Megan over there with Johnny right now. So let's, let's send her over to check in with what he's going on. Good right, luck to you today. Brian, appreciate it. Okay. I'm jumping. Okay, we have now made our way over to Dirt Road Barbecue. You guys are representing Iowa State, and you're actually originally from Iowa, is that correct? We have Karen and Ryan Murphy here. Yep, we're both from Iowa. Iowa, and you guys, did you meet in Iowa? We actually met in Maryville, Missouri at Northwest Missouri State when we were going to college. Very good. So tell me, we're about halfway through our cook. Right now, you're starting to pull some things off, vent some things, getting ready. Where do you feel like your cook stands? Are you right where you want to be? Is there a category that you're feeling really good about? Or is that a jinx and you really don't want to talk about it? <laughs> We're struggling today. The, the wind, um, I'm actually pretty happy with the brisket. Pork, we're not sure about. Ribs are behind and we don't know about chicken. Chicken's gonna come off in about 10 minutes, but I'm not feeling very good about today, actually. This is the perfect moment for a comeback story of the century right here. We're feeling down. You guys really, you're on the end, so you're really feeling the wind right when it hits. So I've seen you, Karen, running to go get pans and tinfoil and some different things. Talk about elements and, and what makes this a little bit different. Do you normally have any kind of cover that you're in when, in a competition? Is, is this different? This is incredibly different. Yeah. We normally have a 40-foot trailer that's got the porch on the back, and so I have a kitchen where I can be warm and out of the weather. And so, yeah, this is very different. It reminds us of our first competitions when we did cook out of pop-up tents. And uh, we very quickly said, if we're going to do this very often, I want to be comfortable and I want to not have to deal with elements. So kind of going old school. Yeah. And you guys have been competing for, what, like seven years? Is that about, about how long you've been? What got you into it? Because we've noticed kind of a pattern with a lot of the folks that are out here today that they send, tend to be either from the 1990s when they started. You're going to meet a couple of those Hall of Famers soon. And then you've got folks who started 2012, kind of seven, seven years ago time frame. Was there something that got you into barbecue maybe that gave you the edge to push right on in to, to competing? Watching Johnny Trigg on Barbecue Pitmasters. <laughs> that right on up didn't I yeah that's great tell, tell me what it's been like to see to progression from going from a pop-up tent to having your own rig and, and those elements it, it's just kind of been the evolution you know it's everybody used to be in pop-ups and then everybody's rig just keeps getting bigger and bigger and more elaborate is that absolutely necessary absolutely not <laughs> you, you can get into barbecue cheap you know you can be out here with a couple of uh, Weber grills or WSM's for very inexpensive you can make it whatever you want to make it and tell me what are you guys cooking on we're cooking on a jambo on, they, they got a jambo so you kind of you guys took the step up not only in equipment but also in what you're what you're riding around in so i wish you a lot of luck it's a big deal to be here congratulations on being chosen to be a part of the national barbecue league i think we've got a couple more teams that we're going to hit good luck today need it. yeah <laughs> I'm here with Barbecue Hall of Famer Johnny Trigg. We just got to see him put some pretty good-looking chicken on the pit. Everything coming along all right? Everything's on tune right now. Excellent. Well, who are you here representing this year? What, what school are you representing? I'm representing the great University of Texas. Are, you're familiar with Texas? Oh, yes. Right. What part of Texas are you from? I'm from around the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Excellent. Well, thank you for coming up here to Kansas City to be a part of the Big Q, well, Big you. 12 Big Q Championship. Thank you. So, you got a, this is a jambo pit that you cook on back here, right? Yeah, it's a jambo. So, and... 
you are known for your spare ribs, the legendary Johnny Triggs spare ribs. Is that what you're going to be preparing today? I'm preparing uh, four slabs of, of spare ribs, and I'm, I'm known as a rib king. Are you going to be doing anything different, or are you just stick to what, what got you here? Well, I guess after I tell you, I'd have to shoot you. <laughs> That's where, let's <laughs> take a step back. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. No, I'm, I'm not doing anything different. Doing, I've been cooking this recipe right since 92. Is that when you got started with Competition Barbecue? I got started in 1990. How many competitions, if you had to add them all up, do you think you've been a part of? Oh, I don't know. I used to do 40, 45 yeah, a year. Yeah, I'm down now about 20, 25. That's, that's a lot, a lot of cooking. I, mean, I turned 80 years old last year, so I had <laughs> Well, happy start. birthday. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if you had to win one category today, that's what we're asking everybody, would it be ribs or are you looking to tackle rib, something different? Rib, ribs? Rib, rib. Excellent. Well, if, they come, either, well, anyone. if they look as good as that chicken did, I'd say you're going to be a contender today. And we've got your wife, Trish, over here, too. This is my sidekick right here. How Trish. are you doing today? I'm doing fine. He's got we got barbecue so well that's the mark of a champion right it gets it gets everywhere all right well thank you very much good luck to you guys today thank i hope you. you do well thank you very thanks much. thank you all right okay it is a great honor to be standing right here with slaughterhouse five and jeff staney really cool to have you a part of this you have been one of those staples on the Kansas City Barbecue Society. Things are flying on the Kansas City Barbecue Society trail that we looked up to, we used to watch and dream, and now here we are. We're getting a chance to interview you. So great to have you here. How? When was your very first contest? My very first contest was the American Royal in 1991. Uh, I think this next year will be our 28th or 29th American Royal in a row. Uh, we started cooking competitively a lot with KCBS in 1992 and the rest is i guess history and you're and you're back you took a little time off and you're back and now you know you just keep winning yeah, that's we, you you just won another contest a grand champion just recently didn't you yeah, we, were, we were fortunate enough to win uh the the uh, smithfield guinea pig in uh, indio california about two weeks ago we don't cook a lot um, a couple years ago we did about 15 a year it just kind of comes and goes if we i've always said if i'm if i want to if i'm going to cook and have fun then i'll do it when it stops being fun we won't do it but we do cook at least one we do the american royal every year that's great and you spend a lot of time with your restaurants that's that's where you you tend to spend a lot of time and that's where a lot of people in kansas city they know you they love right. you they line up for you right. so tell me a little bit about we've got one restaurant right here in uh, the power and light can you right. give me a little little info on that yeah we, we opened the county road ice house a year ago about about one year ago last week uh, we were open for Big 12 tournament last year. It's a it's a joint venture between myself and the guys with Rock Hill Grill. It's Joe's Kansas City Barbecue. We've but then we've also got full service. We got a lot of we got a lot of we got a lot of bar scene. We got burgers and tacos. And it's really a fun place. And obviously, it's hopping during the yeah. during during the Big 12 tournament. Well, and one of our staples for Jason and I is to go get a shop, soft shell crab poor boy from Ooh, Joe's much. Kansas City um, during Lent. So this is like one of our favorite times of the year be able to go pop over there and, and get that but we're here to talk competition yep. today I noticed you had some color coding on your on on your list of, of where and when you're gonna be pulling things off is that your handiwork or do you have people behind the scenes it's, no that's my that's my handiwork J, J, JB and I work on that list and I, we don't cook a lot so it's not really intuitive or anymore and I want I want to follow a, a pretty strict pattern so we color code it so if I need to know what I'm doing next for pork I can look and pork is orange and chicken is blue and ribs are green it, it's goofy but it makes sense to no, me it makes complete sense and that's one of the things that you're gonna find as we interview a lot of these pit masters is there is a system to everything they do you don't get this good and this consistent by by winging it you really know what you're gonna do and then but but, but also a pit master someone who can understand when something has happened and how to correct it so yeah you, you've got to have a really good game plan the game plan comes from practice and 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 noting your 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 stumbles and your successes and then trying to make a game plan but Every cook's different. I didn't expect when we when we wrote this game plan out that it was going to be 34 degrees this morning and windy. So we've had to adapt. We actually put some things on a little bit earlier. Um, we're going to try and tighten up our, our windows because there's not a lot of way to hold anything. We're going to pretty much we're going to much pull it out of there, cut it, sauce it, and go. And hope hopefully it's going to be good because I don't have a lot. There's not going to be a lot of room to stand here in the in the cold and make your barbecue better because it's going to deteriorate pretty fast. Yeah. Well, we greatly appreciate your time today. Good luck. Congratulations okay. on being part of this. Thanks. All Thanks, right, Megan. you're welcome. Thank you. The thing I love about the 
Snake River Farms American Wagyu is what you get when you get the cross between the Japanese Wagyu, which is known for its marbling, its sweet flavor, and then you combine that with the American traditional beef. And when you combine those two together, you get that deep, meaty flavor from the American beef combined with that sweet marbling, and it creates a unique and extraordinary product.
All right, welcome back to the Big 12 Big Q Championship presented by Prairie Fresh here at the Big 12 Men's Basketball Championship. My name's Jason Day. I'm Megan Day, We're and I put my coat back on. <laughs> Ooh, it's chilly out here. We're Burnt Finger Barbecue. We're your host today. We just took you around to meet every one of these teams, see how things are progressing. We're still about 30 minutes out from turn-ins. So that, what that means is that each one of these teams right now are stepping through the final preparations of their chicken. There's a team of judges that are sitting down the road here that they're going to run a little clamshell box of six individual portions out to get judged. At least six. Yes, you that's you it. have to put at least six in the box. Some folks will get a little aggressive and put eh, eight or nine in yep. there. So that's going to be some fun things. Maybe we can catch some of that. You can get more chicken legs in yep. than a chicken thigh. So what teams are turning in what kind of meat? Yep. We, well, we saw thighs, we saw legs. Brad here, we saw him prepping some wings earlier, so I'm interested to see if maybe those make did it into he, the turn-in box. Do you think they're going to make it in? I don't know. I think the, the taste will determine that here in a few minutes. So Brad is, is the, the king of I want to do something different, stand out, <laughs> be bold, so we'll see if that works in his favor or not. Yep. Yeah. So each one of these guys looks like they're pretty much in the uh, – in the zone right now so we're not gonna we're not gonna go in just yet but as they get a little bit closer we're gonna go up up close and personal yeah. see some of these last finishing tips that they get maybe we can pick up some secrets from them you never Tell, know what are the judges looking for Jason what what is it yeah. when someone puts that box right in front of them I mean it, it can't be super warm no. so so what I mean are they yeah. gonna get dinged for that so from a, this is a Kansas City Barbecue Society sanctioned contest. So what that means is each of the judges are looking and judging on appearance, taste, and tenderness. They've got a scale from one to nine that each of these guys will be, or gals, will be graded on in their, their uh, appearance, starting with of what it looks like, one to nine, taste, how flavorful, on one to nine, and then uh, tenderness. So on chicken, the thing the judges are looking for is bite through skin. If you're going to give them skin on your yep. chicken, you better make sure that the judge can sink their teeth right through it. That meat comes right off the bones, juicy, tender, tender, flavorful, everything that you would want in a yep. single bite of chicken. And that's what they're trying to accomplish here today. And we're and we'll hopefully we'll be able to get a chance to see what some of these folks are putting in their box and talk to them about how did they drive that flavor <laughs> into that chicken. Yeah. Do they, you know, the big thing people always talk about, do you scrape your chicken skins, you know, to make it easier to bite through? And, and hopefully we'll get a chance to ask some of these cooks what they're doing, bring you behind the scenes and see what that's yep. all about. And each one of these teams is assigned to a team for the Big 12. So each we've got Iowa State right here, um, all the way down. Each team's representing a different school. And so as we go through the turn-in process today, we'll get live scoring. We'll tell you who's winning coming out of each category to find out which school in the Big 12 their barbecue reigns supreme. K-State. K-State? Yeah. I'm going with Brad. I think he's going to be bold and different. <laughs> I don't know. These Texas guys down here look pretty yeah. serious. <laughs> <laughs> no, we got, we've got a lot of serious competitors down here. We've got some guys that have been, as you met, Hall of Famers. We have brand new guys on the... Those folks down from Boomerang, they came on the scene three years ago and just took second in all of the whole country, the whole country yeah. for Team of the Year. So you've got some young guns that are here, and then you've got some of the guys that have really been here and done this for a yeah. long time. Every one of the teams that are here are either a state, national or world champion so it really is the best of the best that the national barbecue league has brought together or or just tv guys or just yeah, yeah. or just a couple <laughs> tv folks <laughs> yeah. so we're really excited to see i see johnny trigg he's he's finishing off his chicken right there that looks tasty we might be able to snag a sample of that later yeah. too it's going to be a fun all right. day all right i'm going to peel off and go see what uh, brad's doing and see if we can find out how much he is going to stand out Oh! It's the Travis Clark uh, five second delay. Five you know, second delay. If anybody cuss us, we can slap Travis Clark's logo over the face and have the beep going on. I like so that. That's going. that's instant feedback. And you know, we, we, but no, we just, we just are being cautious, sir. You know, we talked about uh, you cuss, I get cash. That's, oh, that is, that is something I, I want to, I hope I don't have to line my pockets. But you know, it, this is intense. You guys are really, really cooking. This is, you want to win. Yeah, we've got, you know what? Ten minutes before we start walking chicken over there. So. Ten minutes. And how long of a walk have you already? Have you prepped that out? So I brought my uh, K-State alum, nice. David McAllister, who is obviously where's he? Where'd he go? I don't know where. Where's your man? There yeah. he is. He's in very good shape. He's very made for walking. So he's gonna walk in the boxes for me. But I think it's a couple minutes walk. Couple now. minutes walk. Yeah. And um, how how do you plan on keeping it warm? I don't think that's gonna be possible. I think we're gonna serve cold barbecue today. We just gotta make good cold barbecue. And that's what we're gonna do. All right. yeah. So tell me, you you had some wings. Did we uh, do we know yet? Yeah, I've got wings. I don't know. They're a little bit salty, so I'm gonna put some sauce on them. 
And if they kind of balance this back out, I'll put them in a box. If not, if they're still too salty, then I'll probably leave them out. But I've got some legs too, so taking a big swing. We'll find out if how they go or not. What, what's the skin? I mean, what's the skin on a wing? What's what, is that? Is it is it difficult? I mean, do you have to scrape it? What's no, you don't. I mean, that's the cool thing about doing both legs and wings, right? You just yeah, I'll just cook them. But you do want it to be tender, right? So you want it to slide off the bone. You don't want them to sit there and have to chew or do anything like that. You want that skin to be nice and tender, like a nice wing should be. So. Hopefully we got that texture right. All right. Well, I think we're we're done here. Um, I don't know where we're going to next, but I think Jason's maybe got Joe, TV Joe. Oh, TV Joe. I got to. Wait. Maybe oh, can you lead in for TV Joe can you again? can you can you watch All this right. so you can you can see what's yeah, going on with them. Okay. All right. All right. Thanks for your time. Good <laughs> luck. Really good. Yeah. Turn his, turn his sauce towards the camera. All right, I am here with Joe Pierce of Slaps Barbecue. He's getting his chicken out right now. Yep. Joe, it looks like you're sorting these. What, what do you got going on? Why are you putting some on one side, some on the other? Yep, so what I do when I cook this chicken is I have my corner pieces that go in the corner of my pans, and then I have the middle pieces that go in the middle. And I always like to pull from the middle pieces because they all cook a little more consistently. Um, and so that's what I'm doing. These are the middle pieces and these are the corner pieces. And I always taste one corner piece before I sauce just to make sure I'm kind of close. And so, yeah, we're looking, we're looking pretty good. Yeah, but, earlier uh, you were telling me that you thought you were having a little trouble getting some color. This, this looks like you've, you've gotten some pretty good color on these, yeah. these pieces of chicken. What, did you do anything different? Did you make an adjustment? I did not make any adjustment. <laughs> they just came out right. So, Excellent. Trust uh, the process. Trust the process, <laughs> absolutely. So now I'm just kind of just letting them sit for a minute. I'm kind of looking at which ones I want to try to get in the box, which ones I don't. You know, this one's ugly. I don't want that one. That one's got a little sauce, weird sauce spot in it, so I might swap it out for so this you, guy. You're trying to find six that look identical? Is that, is that the as goal close, here? Yeah, as close to identical as possible. So I like those six. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to taste this guy. Um, so I always finish with a little of my chicken sauce on the table. You, you're just making a little puddle here. Making a, making a little puddle, then a little smoke this barbecue mo right in the middle of it. Just to change up the flavor a little bit, yeah, blend just it. To give a, just to give it a little smokiness, because I don't use any wood when I cook with the chicken. I just use lump charcoal, so it, if anything, it needs a little smoke flavor. Hit it with a little finishing powder. So what's the finishing powder do? Uh, finishing powder just gives it that last pop of flavor. And we're going to take a bite here and see what happens. Ooh. You got that bite through skin. Looks bite, juicy. Bite through skin, nice and juicy. And that was a bad piece of skin, too, so I'll go ahead and take this side, too. So you got a little bit of skin that pulls off there. Does that worry you at all? Not on the second bite. No, you're looking for just that bite through skin on the first bite? If that was the first bite, I would have been worried. But So what do you think about flavor? Is this, is this Are you happy with what you got today? I think it needs the sauce, and I think it needs a finishing powder today. So you're going to go back and put a little bit more powder on it? I'm going to do it as I box. So I'll go ahead and get this guy opened up here. What do you got in there? Is, it, that, looks, is that chopped kale? Chopped kale. It's a little secret I do that not a lot of other people do and uh, saves me a lot of time on boxes. So I'm going to start with my middle piece here. Dunk the bottom and the edges. My finishing powder. How come you're not putting any sauce on top? No, the, I don't want to change the integrity of the sauce that I had set perfectly. I mean, it's got a nice glossy sheen to it and I really like the way that looks. So if I put too much uh, raw sauce is kind of what I call it on there. It's going to make it look a little over sauce, even though it's probably not. Would but you ever go back and put sauce on top? Or are you strictly well, just you leaving it based on it going back in the pit? Yeah, I don't. I just I'm going to put it back on the pit with that sauce, and then I'm never going to sauce the top of these again. So this is everything you're doing now is flavor adjustment based on what you yep. just tasted out of that sample piece. Hundred percent flavor adjust it, adjustment based on uh, what I just tasted. So they could probably live without the finishing powder, but I think these need a little extra pop today of the field that we're cooking against you know these are the best cooks in the country and everybody's gonna have good chicken so. did you do anything to put flavor into the meat or is this all just based on the, your smoke and seasoning did you doing brining or yeah, marinating so i brined for uh for a couple hours i usually try to brine for four hours but it was really cold yesterday so <laughs> yeah, i yeah, so i took it out a couple hours early and i'll be honest with you it hadn't, it hadn't really changed the flavor or the texture at all well that's good and that's yeah, good that was a good gamble so you're, I see you're making, you're getting some sauce on the back of the box as you're going through this. Any, yeah. any concerns there? You just go, no, you go. I'll, I'll go through and clean it up. I got some toothpicks over here that, not toothpicks, uh, 
What are those little guys called? Q-tips. Those are Q-tips. Q-tips. You could use them as toothpicks. I don't. I don't think it'll work. I don't think it'll work. And I'll get a little secret that I'll do on some of the top pieces. Oh, all right. That will show just once I get this last piece in. These look pretty uniform too. So oh, did you yeah. go? Did you trim all these, or do you, you got a special chicken source that just gives you these like perfectly no, sculpted chicken thighs? Percent trimmed all these. I weighed them out to exactly uh, six and a half ounces, maybe just a tad less this week because they were a little small. But uh, I'll here take. Here was Shake and Bake Barbecue, Tim Shear. Yep. I, I had to stand on a cooler so I could be up here with you. I love Hi. It. Hey. Uh, that was intense. You had you just right had now. a lot going on right now. Sifting through. Tell me what just happened. Um, well, I went through the chickens right now, so the chicken thighs are off, they're done, they're cooked. Um, and, and whenever I get them done right, we kind of overcook them, and when you overcook them, they look ugly. So you always got to take the scissors and clean them back up and try to make them look right. So we dunked them in the sauce, we got our warmed up sauce right here, uh, dunked them in there, hit them with a little finishing, uh, finishing dust right there. And I've got them setting back on the smoker right now. I want to kind of let that sauce uh, tack up a little bit, get a little color, get a little uh, smoke on them here at the end and try to sear up the bottom just a little bit as well. So I saw, I saw, I saw you switching smokers. Was there a reason behind that? What's, what's going on? Why are you switching? Uh, well, Boatride did exactly what I told him to do, which was uh, put pellets on the smoker. And he just over um, achieves everywhere he, everywhere he goes. So, I mean, he just put the whole pack on there. So we got a bunch of smoke going, and that's okay. That's okay. We're used to screwing up. No. So we so, always so, got to figure it out. So tell me, so you add a little bit of pellet in there just to give it some smoke. That's yeah, genius. I like, yeah, I like You're the, so uh, smart. No, I'm not. Uh, candy Sue's pellets is what we always, we call them Candy Sue's. We don't call them pellets. So we put the Candy Sue's on there, a little bit of cherry, give them some color. Uh, and it's a real clean, mild smoke. Those pellets provide a real clean smoke, so it's not like you're going to overdo it unless you put the whole pack on there and stuff and then, then when you get that fresh sauce on there they actually the smoke like sticks to the sauce really well so it doesn't take long at all that's why we only do it for about five or ten minutes here at the end yeah, I, saw, I saw you uh pick one up and think gosh this one why did we why did we keep why did we not keep this one well, you second guessing yeah there's always something i look for on the bottom like see these this one's actually good it just had a funny shape you know and then this one here it starts to pull back i don't really like that you know, and this one just looked ignorant too. So, so tell, um, so okay, so these are not the same size. I know a lot of guys will sit down yeah, with a scale well, and trim them out. Is that is that a strategy you use? I don't use a scale. I, you know, I do try to make them the same. You know, and appearance wise and everything, but I don't go through the scale process. Um, I'm more of an eyeball guy. Yeah. And do you, you're doing thighs. You're sticking straight with thighs. Is there a reason? You know, a lot of guys are changing up, and it's almost not a bad idea for, for a contest like this because you know you want to you want to stand out enough to get that first place call, but. You know, I've been having really good luck with my thighs lately, and I th feel like it would be pretty silly to, you know, go go off track for no reason. I like it. Well, I'm excited to see what these end up doing because you uh, you we'll find out, you're won't we? you're gonna <laughs> well, and that's a, that's a beautiful part about the National Barbecue League is we're gonna have this scoring. You're gonna know. Yeah. Michelle's gonna run back those results, and I'm gonna make announcements right oh. live. So you know right where you stand, I and it's a good thing or a bad thing. I might go home. And nah, chicken. it's a fantastic thing. So, <laughs> so for those of you that are watching, if you've got questions, please send us some questions. We will try to get those answered for you. But this yep. is a pretty intense time right now. Yeah, it's go time right it's, now. We've got about uh, four minutes till the turning window opens. So, we're going to try to hit the front end of that window if possible. That way, we don't get behind uh, from the start. But you know, we also got to get the chicken to where we want it first. Who's running your box today? I got, I got a boat right, man. I brought in the ace. So Mr. You got Oklahoma the ace, State. Mr. Oklahoma State. Yep. That's, and that's who you're representing. Yep, exactly. Yeah, I love that. All right, well, we greatly appreciate it. Good luck. Right, I'll let thanks. you get back to work. Yep, thanks. Appreciate it. We can tinker with it when we're... Okay, here we go. All right, we're here with Old Virginia Smoke representing West Virginia. They just got their chicken thighs placed in the box here doing some final touch-ups. What do you guys think about your chicken today? I think it looks great. The color is great. Luke tasted it. Look at that. Whoa, did you see all that juice jump out That's of there? Awesome. Oh, man. Well, how was it? That's beautiful. <laughs> that looks really, really good. Yeah. So do you, I noticed you guys didn't do any final adjustments or finishing powder or anything like that. We just watched some of the other teams do it. Was, this just didn't need it? So I did the finishing powder before I set the sauce. Uh, yeah, and right. I go pretty heavy with the finishing yeah. powder to give it that kind of extra pop. So. Excellent. Yeah, any, I'm really excited. Any, re any specific reason you do it before the saucing? Um, it melts in, I think, a little ah, better, excellent. so you don't see it, you know, yeah. sitting on top of the sauce. So, 
Yeah, Excellent. we're really these, happy. These look yeah. really, really good. Thank so you, you. you cook yeah. them right here on this, on this can? Drum, yep. Excellent, yeah. excellent. And so did you, just like everybody else, you're dipping them in the sauce and then putting them back on? Yeah, dip them, put them back on for like three or four minutes. I put a few of the pecan um, pellets in there. It gives a little smoke flavor. Excellent. Yeah. That sounds good. Yeah. That sounds good. So. Well, I think you guys are about ready yep. to take these ready off. To go. Yep. Yep. Good luck to you. Thank you. All right. All right, we're going to go run over and see if Joe, that he just finished up his chicken, if we, he's going to send his box out as well. These guys look good. Nice. Good luck to you guys today. Thank you. Okay, we're here. It is really intense right now. I'm with Brad Leiniger again with getting basted. He has pulled out the certified box that has his number on it. He has also... Getting, getting some decisions on whether or not he's going to do wings, whether he's going to do his, I don't know, pull the audience. I don't know. Wings or legs. I don't know. Go wings. Is that what? Yeah. And, you know, he, I, I, I love it. I love it. And Brad just, I, I overheard him say something about the, he thought maybe something was a little too saucy, so he's got to make that decision. On that chicken wing, right? So it's, 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 it's got a lot of sauce, but it was salty before I sauced it, so. No, we might have come back in there. Yeah, he's we're, perfect. We're here to win. Nailed right? it. Nailed we're it. Here, we're not here for seconds. So no. And we're. I want. I want you guys to kind of get in there and, and on the camera. I want you to see how he's going to pull these off on there. The delicate touches that he uses to make sure that those are placed in that box. Because obviously those judges are going to get a, get these. This is going to be completely different than what anybody else here is really turning in. So he's really going to set himself apart, and that is either going to uh, reward him greatly, or we can all have a good chuckle and know not what to do but that's 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 part of that's part of the game you got to play it and i'm excited to see what he ends up doing the royal one time yeah i got a fourth place in pork fourth place in ribs and like 150th in chicken so you win you lose you don't learn your lesson no yeah you win or you learn you don't really lose right you're there you're getting so he is going with some legs i don't know if you guys can get in and and kind of see that i don't want to block that way and then we've got Mr. Dave Callister over here who's going to be running this box into those judges. Okay, not running. It will be a light trot on down, down the road. We've got a, kind of a situation happened here. There was a nice big hospitality tent that blew away in those 50-mile-an-hour gale force winds that happened yesterday. So where we were going to have the judges in a close-by little proximity, no longer is the case, and so as we all will adapt, and um, some of the guys had to bring in some runners to help them out to make sure that they were going to be able to get their chicken to those judges and, and stay put to get ready for ribs, which will be the next category that we've got. And obviously, I don't want to interrupt him, but I do want to make sure you guys are seeing he's got tweezers. So he's going in. He's going in with his tweezers. He's got, looks like dental is, are those dental items that you're using? Yeah, the other, uh, surgical. Oh, surgical, surgical ones. Yeah, and you can see behind us we've got we, we we've got folks that are adding the final seasonings to all of their turn-ins. They're replacing their parsley or their kale, making sure that what is going to go into the judges looks as good as it's going to taste. Because first of all, you're going to eat with your eyes. Those judges are going in for the appearance, and they want to see was there care and time that was taken to put this in the box. And really, that's the first impression. And then they're going to bite it, and they're going to make make sure that it tastes good. We're down to the final minutes. Was that by design? No, usually I get a little bit bigger chicken thighs, but uh, we just didn't get them this week, so yeah. you know that how it goes. That's yeah. all right. Got to yeah. adjust on the flight. You mind if I? I want to try one of these. Is that all right? Man. All right. Go Let's see. It. Let's see. Did you get any, the bite through skin that everybody's oh, the looking bite for? Bite through skin is there. Bite through skin is there. Uh, yes. Oh, and then you get the one piece. <laughs> I don't know. Here, let me. That's do really, one. really good. Let me try that. Oh man, that's flavorful. Here we go. Got it. Of course, the one. Yeah. <laughs> it's tender. It's juicy. Not really good, but a little bit of heat on the sauce. You got any secrets to achieve that you want to share with us? 
little bit of love, baby. A little, little love rub. A little bit Rich has got his own line of love rub seasonings. I, yes. I'm sure there's plenty of the love there, on here. The love is in there, man. The love is in there. Well, I know you've got to start flipping camp now because the ribs are your next turn ribs in, right? Next. Yep. All right. Well, good luck to you. All right, man. Thanks, Jason. Barbecue. It's more than just a kind of cooking. It's more than just a hobby. It's a way of life. And the fire is growing. There's about 600 teams competing this weekend. Everybody's just hoping to get their name called one time, to get one ribbon. It's a fire shared by championship pitmasters and backyard barbecuers alike, handed down from generation to generation. And it's a fire that demands only the very best in quality, fresh pork, period. The quality of the meat when it comes to winning barbecue contests is, is number one. You want to give those judges one perfect bite of the best mind-blowing barbecue that they've ever had. Woo! Boy, it feels good. That's why Smithfield Fresh Pork is proud to partner with some of the top pit masters in the country. These guys don't just smoke the competition. They kick some serious pork butts. These leading pit masters have made a name for themselves as experts and helped drive authentic awareness for Smithfield Fresh Pork to their large audience of followers. The real truth is Smithfield is the best pork and ribs I can cook. Smithfield, the passion they're putting back into barbecue, it's really exciting times in competition barbecue. Because it's more than just flavor that hails from Smithfield, it's world-class championship barbecue. Everyone knows the road to being king of the smoker starts with Smithfield.
Hey guys, we are here with the National Barbecue League at the Big 12 Big Q, presented by Prairie Fresh. We just <laughs> wrapped up chicken. Oh yeah. Jason oh, yeah. and Megan Day from Burnt Finger Barbecue, tell me, do you have a favorite out there? Do you, anybody standing out? Well, from my perspective, I saw three different turn-ins. I saw a little bit different from each one of them. Joe from Slaps Barbecue had some really, really good chicken thighs. He was putting some extra sauce on the bottom to really make them pop. But I tell you, Old Virginia Smoke down here, they bit into their chicken thigh and juice just poured out. So I think they may be tough. What about you? What'd you What'd you see? Well, I saw variety. So we had you know traditional thighs coming in from Tim Shear at Shake and Bake. Your 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 got to stand out. We keep <laughs> talking about it. You got some wings and some legs from Brad at uh, getting basted. And then I was able to kind of run around here and see a few other people's and taste a few. The really thighs are the dominant yeah. right now. Yeah, and absolutely. Everything's turned into the judges. The judges are scoring it right now. We at some point in time will have those results. That's one of the great things about what we're trying to do for you here is to give you that information right off the bat. These guys are going to know within a few minutes where they stand. And you know, these are the best of the best. These are some serious competitors. So it's nothing's gonna make them more angry than if they're they're not in the top. So it's gonna maybe drive them a little bit further to the next category, which we're gonna kinda start start popping into some of the tents over here for Pork ribs. Pork ribs. So what we expect to see as we go through here, since this is a KCBS contest, the typical meat when you talk of ribs, you've got baby backs and you've got spares. Most of these guys, I think, that I've seen so far are cooking spare ribs, neatly sculpted spare ribs. So we'll dive in, ask them how they got got that uh, size, that and all the everything they did to cook. Did they pull their membranes? Did they pull their membranes? We may have seen somebody not pull their membranes earlier. We'll but we don't know out. if that's a strategy. Yeah. You we don't know. know if that was a strategy that he didn't pull his membranes ahead of time or if he uses that as a shield protection that we just don't know about. See, we're getting some tips, we're gonna find too. Out. We're going to find out. We're going to dig deep. We're just investigative. Let's do it. Okay. All right, let's break let's away. Go. We're going to go get in on some of these teams. Right there. Oh, oh look at that. Oh, we got a, we got a white. It looks oh. dry. That looks terribly Flavor's dry. good. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. All right, we're going to we're gonna start popping into some uh, here and, and get you the behind the scenes. All right. All right. To boomerang or old Virginia boomerang we're coming we're coming on coming in at you sorry <laughs> I'm coming I'm coming through okay so we've got Sarah's working on this is is, is this kale box so so Sarah's Sarah's working on the kale box she's gonna make sure that that is a tight platform that's really really what we want to do is we want to make sure that it's almost like a putting green you can put put a golf ball right on there and knock it out of the out of the place so we've got an opportunity to place oh you're tucking in your sides I try you know I think it just makes it look a little cleaner but everybody has their own style you know and, and do you make your kale stand a little higher on a rib box or do you want to have a lower lower kale it just depends how many ribs are putting in sometimes we go with a low rider sometimes a higher profile it just depends how many ribs he's got that day yeah so and so when you say that many ribs, do you mean that many slabs you're cooking or how many are, are feeling good? That many how many we're gonna put in the box, we're gonna do a six or eight, ten, however much you do. Do you have a strategy for that or is it just what tastes best? Whatever tastes best out of the rack. All right. Yeah, definitely. Good. All right, and, and do you guys cooking uh, spares today or baby backs? Oh, gotta go spares. So for do you guys St. Louis those spares? Cut them down, sculpt them? Yes, we trimmed them. How, far, how, how, how aggressive, how many bones do you think are left? You got nine bones left? You got, what do you think? Mm, whatever looks right, honestly. Yeah, yeah, I'm just looking for a size. So I don't really count the bones. So probably take two off the front and two off the back. Okay. Yep. I think uh, Jason's going to be working with some folks now. Do we want to head over and, and see what, what everybody's doing? I wish you guys a lot of luck. I know this is super intense right now. We are here with Johnny Trigg of Smoking Triggers, Barbecue Hall of Famer, the man simply known as the Godfather. He's known for his spare ribs, and he's getting ready to pull them off here right now. We're not going to disturb him just yet. We're just going to kind of keep an eye on what he's got going on here. Looks like he's getting some barbecue sauce ready. Uh, maybe that's going to go back in the pit. 
you told me about two minutes ago that the the, uh, the ribs were three minutes from coming off. So any second now, we should be seeing those St. Louis spare ribs roll off the pit. He's going to transfer them over here to this cutting board and then start putting the knife to him to figure out which is going to go into the box. But looks like everything's going good. Got a nice smoke rolling off of the pit over there. Moving some other meats around. Everything looking good, Johnny? Everything's looking good. We're coming off. All right, we are anxious to see what these guys look like. Trish, everything looking good for you? So far. All right, all comes down to the taste. <laughs> Ooh, look at these. Those look good. Are you sorting them? Any? You look like you were kind of deciding where to put it. Or are you just looking for a spot? I'm just looking for a spot. All right. Try to get four of them on here. We're going to make it. Yeah, you got it. We got it. All right, I'm going to step back over here next to your cutting board. Here they come. Those are very nice. What kind of what kind of wood are you feed in that pit over there? Uh, pecan wood. Pecan wood? Are you burning any charcoal on top or is it just straight pecan? I start my fire with a basket full of charcoal, lump charcoal, and after it burns down, but I put wood on top of it. That pit burns down, I add no I don't add any more charcoal. It's all wood. So these look like they've already got some sauce on them already. Did already. you had you put a little layer on and put them back? Put a little layer. No, they're I'm fixing to chop them up, slice them up. But before, did you put some sauce on yes, them when they were in yes, the pit? Yes, they were in it. it. It was cooked on. I didn't like the way the glaze looked. Add a little more. Yeah, it had some brush looking marks on it. Are you sizing these up as you're going through? Is there anything specific that you're looking for? Uh, no, it's a little late for that now. <laughs> you kind of just deal with what you got? Let's see how let's see how they hit the knife. They look tender. You do like that one or you don't? I don't like this one. What? It's crooked, it's crooked here, right here. It looks like a shape goes down like a banana. Oh, yeah, yeah, I see. You, you want them to be all straight all the way down? Right. I think this one's going to be tender. That one looks good. <laughs> oh, we got a little foil ta tear I there. I got my spatula underneath the foil there, but we're okay. Okay. Looking for a knife? What are you looking for? Paper towel. They must have blew up. There. there you go. Thank you. All right, let's get these things done. So how, how many ribs are you looking to put in your box? I know the judges are, are needing at least six. Are you giving them six, or are you going to give them more than that? I'll give them more. I will probably put, I'll probably put ten in there. Ten? Five, five and five. Lay them on top of each other? Yes, All right, let's see how they cut. Ooh, those already look tender. Oh, steam rolling out of there. You liking what you're feeling? They look good. It, it, the knife's just going right through them. Look Whoop. nice. Come on, baby. Hold it. These are nice, thick ribs. Real heavy. There's plenty of meat on the bone. Everybody out here looks like they're they're cooking uh, St. Louis spare ribs. Well, I got a bone there. It went at the end. It went crooked. I don't like. So we won't use that one. That can be your taster. That's the reason we have uh, a lot of uh, four slabs of ribs. like you're still getting into the, the bone on that side. That slab's kind of curving on you as it goes down. Yeah, then. I don't like that one. We'll turn them over so we can see where that bone's going. So you do that so you can see where the bones are a little bit better? Yeah. I don't like to do it this way. Messing with my glaze. 
As, as we were uh, watching some of the other guys down here with their chicken, they were doing some tasting and then adjusting, maybe with some finishing powders or additional sauce. Are you going to do anything with that or uh, with your ribs? They must be rookies. <laughs> you just make them taste right, right out of the gate, so you don't no need to adjust. I get it. <laughs> these look great. So are these possible contenders here? So, so tell me, are you looking for a time, a temp, a taste, a texture? What is it that you're looking for? In the rib, we're looking for, it's got to be tender. This is a tenderness contest. So we're looking for the feel of the rib when you pick it up and how the probe goes in, not necessarily a temperature. We just want to make sure that it's tender. Nobody likes a tough rib and nobody wants to fall off the bone rib. So it's just nailing that exactly. And it's in the ribs, it's a, it's a minute business. And I, I noticed if the camera can go down, we've got a whole bunch of dead bones here. Yep. What, what killed them? Why aren't they even in they're, contention? What happened there? They're not quite there. They're, they're the ones that are almost there. They're great to eat. But to turn them in today against these guys that are cooking out here, We've got, we've got eight that we love, and that's what we're going to turn in. So you don't even try to put them back in. You're done with them. They can be eaten. I'm ready yeah. to go. Got to stick to my process. Yep. And I, I, I definitely want to make sure we're on time here. Are you yeah. good? Do you yeah, need to check things? Right okay, and, uh, and you've, you've come from the Jambo, and now you have them on your gateway drum. Tell me, why, why, are, we, why are we on a, uh, on a drum for the final part? What's, the, the, what's the story? Put a nice finish on the sauce. Puts a nice finish on the sauce. Gives it a nice, shiny look. And uh, hopefully I'll be able to show it to you a little right. bit there. Wow. Yeah. Ooh, those are pretty. Those are nice. Really that is really hot. We, we have burning, burning hands, turning and burning. So if you guys want to jump in there and, and maybe get on the other side so you can see the man and the magical fingers here. So he's looking at his bones. So there's been a little bit of pullback on some of the meat. I think he's wanting to see what's... That might roll a little... When that bone comes out the bottom, we call it a corn cob. And that meat will spin on there like it's a cob of corn. You don't want that. So. You, don't want, you don't want it to spin on that like a corn on the cob. I got it. And so Bethany's over here. She's got the box. Are you a, a kale or a parsley guy? I'm a parsley guy. We got a parsley guy. Oh, yeah. Luke, nice job. Thank you, thank you. That is good looking. Proud of it. Much love out to my wife who's out there watching. Oh, this. Kim, we miss Kim, you. We miss her and We're sorry you're. If she was here, she'd have done that. It'd have been way better than what I did. So. Well, it, this is on you, Kim. We're just, no. <laughs> no really, definitely, th not. definitely not. This is exciting. So, so what, what Luke's doing is he's going through and he's going to pick out which direction he's going to place them in the box. He's going to figure out if it's exactly what he wants. He has to have six portions in there. So we'll see if he ends up putting six or if he gets eight, as he had mentioned, uh, which ones those are going to be. Because when the judge bites in it, we, we've been told, as you go through the judging process, they want that bite off, but the rest of the meat stays on that bone. So that's what he's, he's looking for here. I'll let you get in on that, that beautiful mahogany, gorgeous rib. putting a final final touches on it he said he, he said he set it back on that can to set it now he's brushing more on it. all right we wish you a lot of luck couple dry, spots. Couple dry spots that's what that's what did it okay good luck and we're gonna take this over to Jason All right, we're over here with Jeff Staney, Slaughterhouse 5, representing KU. They just sent their box into the judges. So these are the ones that didn't quite make the, the cut for, your, for the judges. But did, exactly. the, did your turn-in ones come off the same slab? Yeah, this, uh, we, we, we entered off of two different slabs. I'm not sure which one this was. I think this was the very first slab we did, and it was so good. A lot of times, I, I like to put my best slab on the, on, in, in the front. Yeah. We're, we're going to lay four bones down from one slab, put four bones on the top of it. Eight's about all we would usually do. I don't really like to go ten. Though you gotta have six, but I think yeah. I think eight's better. So these are the rejects, Jason. If you want to, yeah, grab absolutely. Grab a of that. Man, the I think color these on these really look sing. incredible. That's really good. These, look at these that. Seaboard ribs are just, yeah. are just amazing. Oh, they just melt. Look at that bite. Yeah. So one of the things that the judges are looking for here is that you can bite all the way down to the bone. You see right there? That's that's the bone. The meat is so tender, the bone starts to dry out a little bit. But the only place that came off the bone is where, where, you, we, bit. where you bit. We don't if, want the rest of it to fall If the rest of it fell apart, that's going to be a little too much. Now, these are yeah. these are pushing. 
They're right there. They're right there on the <laughs> edge of pushing. And I, and I was told me, he said, you're not going to want those first few off the lung. He said, yeah. they got blown out a little bit. They got blown out a little bit in the back. So, so let's, we, let's talk so, about blowout real quick. Yeah. That's where the bone's coming out right the here. back. Yeah, see it right the membrane. here. This, this, was, this was the last bone yeah. on one of these slabs. These are both the last bones on, on the slabs we entered. You can see they started yeah. to blow out. I went to grab this one, and the bone actually, this one, and the bone fell out. Yeah. That part of that rib is, is, un, is overdone. We worked our way towards the short end and found four off the opposite end. They were so thick. Seaboard cuts those. They pull those ribs. They're so yeah. thick that when they do that, the, the, the shorter bones off the, off the short end are just plenty good enough to enter. Well, yeah. Though a lot, of, a lot of ribs, I've got to enter these. But they got we, we, tend, we tend to take this thicker and get it close to the fire, and we probably left these on about 10 minutes too long because these first few bones we weren't able to use. They eat great. Yeah, but, absolutely. But a judge might be, that's going to be right on the edge. Yeah. I guarantee what we turned in is not going to get us in trouble. Yeah, this one's right there. It's still biting just yeah. right. Is the temperature outside? It's a little chilly today. Does that change anything with the ones you pick, knowing that they're going to cool down just yeah. a hair? We, 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 we left them hot for a long time, and, and pull, we, we cooked them the normal. We left them in the camera longer because I didn't want to have, there's no way I can keep these things warm. So I think they're going to be fine. Yeah. But too hot is when, is when they fall apart, too. Absolutely. So they, they tighten up just a little bit. So you want them warm. But you want you want them eating like that, where you can see 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 you can you can see your bite. You don't see any bone, and the thing doesn't fall apart. Yeah, and I know you are also known for the Cimarron Docks rib rub. Exactly. Is that what I'm tasting on? You got here? a lot. You got a lot of Cimarron Docks in there. We mix in a little, add a little bit of Big Papa in yeah. there, a little, little little bit of everything. That, that rib's a pretty big hodgepodge right this, there. This, oh man, this is full of flavor. This is good. Well, good luck today. Okay, I know you guys got to get into yep. the pork category, so we'll let you get okay. back to Thanks, it. Jason. Thanks, Jeff. Okay. Okay, we're here with Travis Clark, Clark Crew Barbecue. He is putting the final touches on his ribs. Travis, did you do baby backs or spares? Oh, we're doing those St. Louis cut. St. Louis cut spares. You can get in on what he's doing. He is making sure that his box is perfectly framing up those beautiful, those are really good looking. <laughs> those are good looking ribs there, man. Yeah, I will. I, I'll, I'll jump in there in a second. I got gloves on, so I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do that quite yet. But I definitely want to get in there and get some. You got bones up on that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. That's looking good. How were? How was your tenderness? Good. Yeah, you're happy with them. Yeah, I'm very happy. Who's your box runner today? Wade. Wade. Grievous. Wade. Oh, That's awesome. Helps at every class we do, so he's. That's he's great. All right. Okay. They know that, they need them first. Okay, we got scores, guys. I got scores in my hand. For chicken? <laughs> yeah, for chicken. What is it? Well, I, I don't know. Am I, am, I, am, I on, am I allowed to say yet? Yeah. I feel, I feel really, from, really from, important. From this camp, right? We are going to do it right here. Oh, my line. gosh. I feel so important. You got to tell me. Do I have the green light? We got it. We got the green light. Woo, this is so exciting. Okay. You want me to go top three? What well, depends if I'm in it. Top, no, top three. Well, you, you want me to go from the bottom to go all the way? Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna do the top three, and then if I get a clearance to do all, we'll let you know. So we got. Okay, top clearance, clearance all ten. Okay, I mean, well eleven. Technically, there's eleven today. Um, teams competing, so eleven teams. We've got eleventh place. We got smoking triggers. We've got number 10, getting basted. Oh, they, didn't like the they didn't like the legs. Okay, number nine, Fergalicious. Eighth, eighth place, Dirt Road. Seventh place in Chicken, we got Old Virginia Smoke. Sixth place, Boomerang. Coming in on five, Sugar Fire Barbecue. We're going in number four, Clark Crew. Number four. We got number three, Slaps is pulling in third place. Number two, we got a little shake and bake action. Second place chicken and number one slaughterhouse five bringing the heat. Stainy, Stainy. First, first place in chicken. Yep, yep. Now, so we're good with that. We're good with that. You guys, this is this is really a first. I mean, I, I mean, these guys are, are knowing exactly where they stand going into chicken. They just are turning in their ribs. This is exciting. 
Well, yeah, fourth place. Oklahoma, Mr. Clark Crew. Congratulations, that's exciting. All right. All right, good luck on those ribs. Yeah, we'll get them. Yeah. You got ninth and chicken for delicious. Yep. It doesn't say. It doesn't say. So good job, guys. This is exciting. You want to take those? That's it. That's where we. Beef isn't just beef. Dry aged beef has been around forever. We consider it a purifying process. It's really unique. It's incredible. It's a very, very subtle age flavor where you're taking a great piece of meat and you're enhancing it. It's the best dry age in the world. Dry aged beef should be the purest, finest, safest product that you could possibly consume. It's a great eating experience.
All right, we okay. are we are back here at the Big 12 Men's Basketball Championship, Big 12 Big Q, presented by Prairie Fresh. We just got scores in from Chicken. Yeah, I, I, I got them handed to me, and then I said, <laughs> what am I going to do with these? But because of this awesome technology, Big Papa Smokers, thank you for being the sponsor of our technology. We're able to bring all of this to you live. So let's talk a bit, little bit about that. We got some feedback through that technology, which means we've engaged with ah. you, and we're excited <laughs> you're listening and, and playing along. So we got a question about the scoring. Can you talk a little bit more about what is the scoring? Yep. There's some of you out there who maybe have never been to a contest before or competed in one. So we want to give you an idea of why the judges said what they said and, and place the people where they did. Yep, so in a Kansas City Barbecue Society sanctioned event, which is what we have here, is each category is chicken, ribs, pork, and brisket. Each of our teams will be scored on a uh, one to nine for appearance, taste, and tenderness. Each category will sum up the points and then rank. And they are weighted, so appearance is like point five six, and so taste is actually the most is the most important factor. You get the most points out of taste, then tenderness, then appearance. And so if you get all of those points, if you get a perfect score across the board. That'd be 180 points. Right now we don't know the points, but we see what, how these teams stacked up. So we know where they came in and chicken. We will add all of those categories up for the overall, which is what's going to name our grand champion later today. But for now, we only know where they came in on chicken. So yep. should we do the honors yeah, here? Do, do, read them off. All right. So coming in, should we start with first place? Or should we start at 11? We'll start at the 11. So at 11th place, representing Texas, is the Smoke and Triggers. In number 10 spot, representing Kansas State University, you got Getting Basted. In ninth place, representing the University of Kansas, is Fergalicious. Number eight for Iowa State, representing Dirt Road Barbecue. And in number seven, representing West Virginia, our friends at Old Virginia Smoke. Yep. In number six spot, representing Texas Tech, Boomerang Barbecue, number six. And number five with Baylor right behind us, Sugar Fire Smokehouse, number five in chicken. Yep. And then we go to number four, representing Oklahoma, where I was at the moment that we got these scores, Clark Crew came in first place. And right behind us over here as well, in third place, TCU Slaps Barbecue. We got a pretty good look at his chicken box going in. It, it was good. And then in second place, we had coming in representing Oklahoma State Shake and Bake, which we were we were a little concerned about that over pellet issue, for those of you that were with us live. <laughs> it was a lot of smoke, but they made some corrections. Clearly, that turned out to be a, a positive thing, yep. and so he took second place. And our overall chicken champion for the Big 12 Big Q, presented by Prairie Fresh, Representing the University of Kansas down here on the end, Jeff Staney, Barbecue Hall of Famer with Slaughterhouse 5. Mm -hmm. So what's going to happen is these teams are now going to build upon the scores that they just got in chicken with ribs. We should be getting those scores back anytime now. As soon as we get them, we'll go back through yep. those rankings once again. But as these guys are going through their routine, they're now getting their boxes ready for pork. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna, I think yep, you're going to peel gonna away and here. I'm going to come on over here so a camera wants to follow me. All right, and we'll come down here. We're going we're gonna to hang out with the folks from Sugar Fire Barbecue. We got a sneak in behind here. We've got Mike and Christina that are representing Baylor. Looks like you've got a couple of really beautiful. We got some money muscle there. Yeah, I do. They're gorgeous. Really? Huh? No, I'm not lying at all. This is really, really, this is fantastic. And and we obviously we don't want to do anything to get in your way, but I want to make sure that we kind of understand you've isolated some of these muscles because the the pork shoulder is its own its own it's muscle a group. Muscle, so yeah. it cooks different different temperature, different time. The muscle contents break down uh, at a different time than the rest of the meat that's attached. So at a certain point, we do um, isolate it, wrap it itself, and then we want it to come up to a different temperature than the the rest of the. So, yeah. Well, that's good. And I see we've got uh, electric units here. We've got the, the knife we're going. To, we're trying to achieve the perfect medallion for you. Because we do this for you, Megan. Yeah, we do this for me. I'm so, I feel so blessed. Yeah, so, we're, so what they're trying to do here is they're going to make those slices as uniform as possible. They want those judges to get a great bite. We want them to look like little soldiers in a box. <laughs> And it looks like you guys have a nice glaze on top. Did you set those back on to set that sauce, or is that a, a, at the end? Yeah. yeah, no, we went ahead and dunked them in the sauce fully. And then as we're talking about sauce here, my sauce is starting to cook ah. over. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then we reset it in the smoker about five, seven minutes just to get a nice even glaze on it. Yeah. So there's no brush marks or anything like that. And uh, just to give the folks watching along, we called it the money muscle. It is one of the most striated pieces of pork. It has kind of the idea that if you if you can nail the t texture of that money muscle, you win money. Yeah, it has the best flavor, and if you know how to get the right texture out of it, if you treat it the way it's supposed to, then it will be the 
it's money. All right. <laughs> Good luck. Thanks. Appreciate it. All right, I'm here with Dirt Road Barbecue. They've got their pork box that they're building right now. This is the money muscle that they've just sliced. This is one of the muscles that hangs off the end of the pork butt. Looks like they've got some chunks that they pulled out of that pork butt as well. Look, what are you doing there? It looks like you're dipping them in sauce. Yep, dipping in sauce just to get the tip. So, so it's just the bark that's going in the sauce, right? Yep, that's it. Is that all, that's all you want? That's all I want in there. So you, coming out of chicken, we saw that you guys were in eighth place. Right. Did, did you like your chicken? Was that a surprise to you? Uh, we liked our chicken, but chicken scores can be pretty tight, so you yeah. just never know. Like, it might be only two points difference between first and tenth. So is that going to change anything as you head into these other categories? Are you going to make adjustments seeing, based on those results at all? I don't know that there's really a whole lot we can do at this <laughs> point. I mean, it, You're it's, committed. We're committed to what we got going. So I see you here. You've got this big pan of juice. And you've got these some extra money muscle slices here. Are you going to use this juice for anything? Um, not anymore. Are these the rejects? Are these the ones that didn't make the cut? Yep. What, what, was, what didn't you like about them? Why aren't they in the box? Uh, they weren't just quite as tender. So. Gotcha. So what are you looking for in tenderness here? Because it's easy when you're talking, uh, talking ribs. You know, you're biting down and you can see the bone, make sure it doesn't fall off. How, what are you looking for from a pork butt's perspective as far as tenderness? You're looking for it to be uh, not mushy, but like it kind of falls apart in your mouth. You know, just yeah, it's a little bit of chew. Kind of a feel thing, right? It is a feel thing, and, it, and it's really kind of hard to describe. <laughs> but you know, when you when you get it right, it feels right. Yeah. So if I can tell here, it looks like you guys are using the that, some of that dark meat that surrounds the bone. Is is that by per is that by design? Is that purposeful here? Yeah, yeah. that's that's kind of what I like to use for my chunks. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Some people call it the eye muscle or the horn muscle. That's that's what we use for our chunks. Well, it looks, looks good. So how much more? See, you're building a nice nice little pile here. Are you going to keep doing that? Oh, you're digging into another butt. Yeah, we're going back in, and I'm going to uh, try to scrape this uh, fat cap off and get in and get some uh, pulled and out of the bacon. So the bacon, let's talk about that a little bit. It's not what you would typically think. If somebody at home is used to traditional bacon, this is not what we're talking about here. So there's a layer that sits, a, a sits right. in the, inside the fat cap of some nice stringy muscle, and that's what you're referring to as the right. bacon, right? When you, I don't know if the camera can see this, but when you get down here under this fat cap, there's a real thin layer of, uh, of pork, and that's like the most tender pulled pork on the, on the shoulder. And we'll go through all this, and uh, that'll be our pulled for our turn-in box. Yeah, that layer itself, it sits between two fat layers. Yeah. So that meat, as it cooks, not only is it down in your juice, it's also surrounded by fat. So all that fat that renders, all that flavor just makes this just beautiful succulent pork. You're going to chop it up or anything? Is it going to be strands? We're going to try to pull it out in, in long, like, thumb pulls if Excellent. it all works out. Ooh, all right, let's, let's take a look and see how they do this. You just trying to get the fat off? Trying to get the fat off. Looks like we got another butt coming out. You going to do bacon from two? Uh, we'll try to get it off all three if we can. Oh, three. Three bacons. And that'll go here in this empty spot? Yep. yep. <laughs> Does it concern you no, not having any bark on the on the bacon at all? Um, not really. We'll uh, go back heavy with some uh, finishing powder and some au jus with it and some sauce to get some more flavor in it. So it looks like there's a whole lot of juice coming out of those foil packets there. You, you got any secret sauce in there that you're willing to share with us that went into that foil packet? Um, uh, actually, some. Uh, okay, we're here with Richard for Gula Barbecue. You are in the middle of. You're, you're ready to turn in for, for your pork. Yep, we're working on our pork box right now, so we're going to work on a little bit of the pulled, uh, and then we're going to get our money muscles out. They're letting the sauce set right now on the smoker, and then we'll be ready to roll. Okay, wh where, which smoker you got them on for the sauce? Uh, we got it on the, the uh, Myron Mixon G33 right there, the gravity feed, and so everything's just uh, rolling like it's supposed to. All right, how's the texture feeling for you right there? That's what you're going through? It's looking okay. It's looking okay. Yeah. Good. And you're going to set it in some au jus, I see. Yeah, I'm Set it right here in some au jus and kind of keep it just a little bit warm until uh, we're ready to turn in, and, and uh, that way we can keep it as hot as possible until it's time to roll. Do you, do you cook these at, uh, at different temperatures for a reason or pull things at different times? Uh, yeah, definitely, because these, take, these are a little bit longer cook, and so we, uh, we try to give them a little bit more time to get to the tenderness that we're looking for, and uh, once we get to that tenderness, we let it hold and, and re-soak up some of that flavor, 
and then go from there. Awesome. Okay, this is beautiful information, but guess what? I've got even more beautiful information for you. I got scores on ribs <laughs> right here. All right. Are you ready for this? Oh, my gosh. Oh, this is a tale of two cities here. We've got 11th place, four ribs, Slaughterhouse five. So we go from first to last. That's how this works, man. This is how this works. Number 10th place, we got Smoke and Triggers. They're doing great. We got on their, on their ribs there. We got ninth place, Sugar Fire Smokehouse. Eighth place, we got Old Virginia Smoke. Rounding in seventh place, we got Boomerang. Sixth place on those ribs, we've got Clark Crew Barbecue. Fifth place, Holding Solid Slaps Barbecues right there. Fourth place, Getting Basted. They pulled those, those ribs out and doing good. We've got third place, Shake and Bake. Took on third for those ribs. We've got second place, Fergalicious oh, Barbecue. Congratulations, right. second right. place, man. That's awesome. And first place in your ribs, you got Dirt Road. So right. we, we, we've got some amazing Dirt Road. Woo, woo! They did, oh, there's a celebration happening. I've never seen that man smile before. <laughs> Look at that guy go. That is a gleaming smile. Congratulations. <laughs> okay, so congratulations. Thank you very you're much. You're very welcome. That's I'm glad awesome. I got to, to give you the news. Yeah. Okay, so so you are, you're just putting all that beautiful love in there. You've got your money muscle that's set. It's set and ready to go. Now, is this more pork or are you venting yeah, brisket? Pork, okay, yep. one more pork butt. So you, pork. you ended up doing three pork butts today. We always do three pork butts. Yep. Very good. Yep. All right. Oh, congratulations. All right. All right. Thank you very you're much. You're welcome. All right, I'm back here on the Sky Cam with Shake and Bake Barbecue. They just finished up their pork box. Is that some of that bacon that we were seeing Dirt Road over there work? Oh, uh, bacon. Dirt Road took my bacon move. Seriously. <laughs> Come on, man. He claimed it was his. He's never had an original thought in his life. <laughs> so we, we're seeing a lot of money muscle out here, a few teams doing bacon. What, what are you doing with the bacon? Is there anything specific that you're looking for? Looks like, yeah. ooh, is that a little maple syrup going yeah, on? Yeah, put a little of this, a little of that in there. Right now, right before we turn it in, I give it a final once over. Ooh, just a little drenching of flavor over the top there. A little drencher, yep. Nice. Is there barbecue oh, sauce in here too, or is that just pan juices? Yeah, I put, I put a little blue hog, the Champions Blend in there. I put um, the pan juices, amped up with some uh, extra, extra dry rub and stuff, and uh, and a little maple syrup, kind of give it that blend of flavor. Some Tennessee red in there as well, and uh, that's our, that's our flavor. Profile. Nice. All these are cooked on the, these gateway cans right behind us here. So how, how long did this pork butt take to cook? So uh, normally people think pork butt's low and slow, like a 12-hour cook. And that's, right. that's not how you guys roll here. Uh, Shake and so bag, is it? cook hot and fast, man. We've actually got a trademark on that term, hot and fast, as far as barbecue cooking goes. And um, and what we do is, is put on it at about 7, and it was done in about three and a half hours today. So roll it. Nice. This is, this is looking good. You happy with everything? Uh, so far, I've been pretty pretty all right with everything. You know what I mean? Pork. Did you change anything in pork? Uh, no, I can't change anything about that. You know what I mean? I mean you're, you're kind of known for your pork, aren't you? Well, we've had some pretty good pork here, so <laughs> you know, it's it's what I wanted to hit. Every money muscle is different, obviously, yeah. and we we had four good slices from our best one, so I had to supplement two or three from another another uh, money muscle. So hopefully that didn't hurt too bad. It looked but pretty good in the box. Yeah, it looked good. I thought you know, uh, and the pull was good. Had the right texture. We kept it as hot as we could. That's going to be key today. Yep. We had it on the drum at 350 just to. You know, make sure it goes goes in hot. So, so 350 degrees is what you're cooking these pork butts. Is yeah, that basically, what you basically, yeah. How do you keep them from burning? Uh, burn and turn. Burn and turn. So when they start oh, right there. So when they burn, you just turn them. Turn. Yeah, that's how it works. Burn. <laughs> that, that makes sense. <laughs> All right. Good luck to you. I think we I heard some results going on over here. So we we'll go check right. in and see if we know right. where everybody came in on pork. Get ready to get mad. All right. Here. Thanks. Good luck, Tim. On today. They were on. Yep. So what do you think? Well, you guys did spares? Yes. Again? Yep. Yeah. And what do you the think? The bite was perfect. They were money ribs. Do you think it was the table? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. But we cooked them 52 times last year and first in the nation, so I know when the ribs are good. You know, you know. That's t that's tough. I mean, because that's part of it. That's part, of, that's part it. of it. You're against some of the best teams I'm in the country getting today. Hurt. You're getting your feelings hurt. Right now. What happened? Later. Usually I can hold it down and, and run, but I'm getting my feelings hurt right now. It's in the present right now. <laughs> you are feeling it. I, I am. I am. And then I, and then I got my feelings hurt last night. Oh, I was going to say, uh, you guys, you have just, uh, last night you got beat by the, you know, Texas Tech. And, yeah. Is there, is there some bad blood between you guys? Uh, not really, but uh, 
he was headbutting me and doing this last That's night. Well, I got to tell you, when he came back and saw last night, he had a tear in his eye. He was so happy. Luke, Luke was so happy. He was rejoicing. But I didn't get to see you guys. So. We, didn't have, we didn't have that kind of tear because, in our eyes. Because we ran. <laughs> you ran. Just like it was a contest. <laughs> you said, I'm out of here. See you later. Right to the hotel. <laughs> I saw the Prevost bus of tech, like the back end of yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> Raider Red was crying. Oh, I'm so sorry. Well, yeah, and that's one of the cool things about what we're doing here is you know right where you stand right now. So do you remember where you placed in know, chicken? I don't know how good Sixth that place. And I, yeah, but it's remember, it's a whole cumulative score. You got two more. You got two more. And you're done with pork. You've already turned it in. And I know they're good because my mom said they were good. Oh, mama knows. <laughs> mama knows. That's right. That's, that's good. Right. And did you, okay, so tell me, do you guys willing to tell us? Did you turn in money muscle? We did. Okay. Medallion? Nice, pretty medallions. About how many of those discs do you put in? Mm, I put in nine. Nine. Yep. Very good. Other, any other muscles you put in? Uh, we just we shredded a little bit of bacon. Yeah. That's the key right there. So he said the bacon, which is a, a you know some of the pork belly on 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 I'll that show pork. You, but I'd have to kill you. No, he's not going to show us. <laughs> We should have been over here. Well, anyway, we, really awesome to have you guys here all the way up here from Texas. So, appreciate it. Good luck. Good luck. <laughs> Barbecue. It's more than just a kind of cooking. It's more than just a hobby. It's a way of life. And the fire is growing. There's about 600 teams competing this weekend. Everybody's just hoping to get their name called one time, to get one ribbon. It's a fire shared by championship pit masters and backyard barbecuers alike, handed down from generation to generation. And it's a fire that demands only the very best in quality, fresh pork, period. The quality of the meat when it comes to winning barbecue contests is, is number one. You want to give those judges one perfect bite of the best mind-blowing barbecue that they've ever had. Championship pitmasters agree. There's nothing like being pitted against other world-class pitmasters to flame their competitive fire. Barbecue is just a passion. It gets in your blood. Barbecue, it sucked me in in such a major way. And what hooks me on cooking is the creative process, the immersion in details. You know, where there's smoke, there's camaraderie. The barbecue circuit's great. Family, fun. You meet the, the most amazing people in the world. Kind of like a big tailgate, but it's all really about family and all our friends from around the country. I love cooking, I love making people happy, and I love to prove that I have the best barbecue. And for 2019, Smithfield is bringing barbecue's best together in one smoking hot competition, unifying teams from all over the country and across the major barbecue sanctioning bodies. We're igniting the spark for the ultimate contest, the Smoking with Smithfield National Barbecue championship. Smithfield has developed a year-long barbecue points chase, counting pitmaster scores from barbecue competitions across the country. Teams can track their progress on our leaderboard on smokingwithsmithfield.com. The top 24 teams in the points chase will battle through a three-round playoff in New Orleans, November 14th through the 17th. The National Barbecue Championship is sizzling with opportunities for sponsors to surprise and delight cook teams with cool swag and prizes and interact with top pitmasters and customers through VIP events. Pitmasters have a chance at over $50,000 in cash. Also at stake, the biggest bragging rights is the unified National Barbecue Champion. The great thing about this contest, it unites barbecue. It incorporates all of the major sanctioning bodies to determine the true champion. It's been a great thing for barbecue as a sport and for the Smithfield brand. Everybody out here is competitive. We just come here, we have a great time, and hope we hear our name called. I think it's going to change the way a lot of teams look at competition barbecue. From the backyard to the competition circuit and the road to the Big Easy, Smithfield is changing the face of barbecue. The Smoking with Smithfield National Barbecue Championship is igniting the flame of competition barbecue. I'm excited because Smithfield is bringing this great opportunity to find out who is the best cooker in the country. You know what's gonna be fun? Going head to head against my brothers from Texas. Hey, Big Papa, I hope to see you in New Orleans for the Smithfield National Barbecue Championship. See you in New Orleans, yeah! <laughs> Thank you. 
We are Uline, the leading distributor of shipping, industrial, and packaging materials to businesses throughout North America. Millions of customers trust Uline to be their partner for high quality, carefully sourced products. As a family owned and operated company with 6,000 employees and an outstanding reputation, we've made customer satisfaction our highest priority. The Uline Advantage is our commitment to always provide quality products, unparalleled customer service, and fast delivery to meet your needs. It all started in 1980 at a dining room table with one product, the H101 Carton Sizer. Today, we have over 34,000 quality products to help run your business. Need boxes? We have the largest inventory anywhere. Looking for pallet trucks or industrial shelving? We have thousands of material handling items to choose from. In stock at every location and ready to ship the same day. Customer service is the heartbeat of our company. A live representative is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Place an order or ask a product question. Our knowledgeable customer service representatives are always available in English, Spanish, or French. There are no automated messages and no buttons to push. You are always directly connected. Browse our catalog and place your order on the phone or online. Our user-friendly website and mobile site let you order anytime from anywhere. We have 13 million square feet of distribution centers strategically positioned throughout the United States, Canada, and Mexico. All orders placed by 6 p.m. are shipped same day from one of our 11 locations closest to you to guarantee fast delivery and shipping savings. Get exactly what you need when you need it. We want to be your long-term partner and exceed your expectations every day. Quality products, unparalleled customer service, fast delivery. Come experience the Uline Advantage today.
All right, welcome back to the, the Big 12 Big Q Championship here presented by Prairie Fresh. We just got rib results back in. Our team's behind us. They're working on brisket right now. Pork boxes went in. But we, I think we have an indication yeah. on maybe who who might be the uh, front runner here after we see these rib results. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna real quick run through these results and let you know kind of where we yep. stand for those who've just tuned in. Pork is in. We're waiting on those scores, but we do have our rib results and yep. number eleven. Well, and, and to recap, Cal. as we go through each of these categories, we're gonna add their scores. So this these rib scores are gonna add on top of the chicken, then pork and brisket. So yeah. it's still anybody's game. So we'll start at the bottom here in 11th place, okay. our chicken winner, Slaughterhouse 5. So he's, he's dropped here. There's still yep. plenty of time to come back, though. 10th place, we got Smoke and Triggers representing Texas. And in 9th place, we've got Sugar Fire with Baylor. And in 8th place, we've got Old Virginia Smoke. They represent in West Virginia. In 7th place is Boomerang representing Texas Tech. And in sixth place, we got Clark Crew Barbecue with Oklahoma representation. And in fifth place is Slaps Barbecue representing TCU. Yep, getting basted coming in on fourth place, representing K-State. Hitting up third place is Shake and Bake, Oklahoma State. Yeah, we got we got second place, we got Fergalicious for the Kansas. They're, they're coming in second place. And our overall rib champion, representing Iowa State, Dirt Road Barbecue. Dirt Road Barbecue. All right, yeah, so we're, I, we're in ribs. Ribs. We're ribs. Just recapping ribs. ribs. Calm down. Yeah, we yeah, don't yeah. have pork he scores he yet. I thought he had a pork championship too <laughs> over there. All right. So if we look back at all of these, right now it looks like maybe our friends from Shake and Bake could, Shake be, and bake could be in the lead. They've solid. had two big calls. Slaps could be in there too. We don't know the actual score. So we're just going off a of placement right now. So it's it, really, it's anybody's ball game. Yep. So I think we need to hop in here and see what we got going on on brisket. We got, brisket. We got Clark Crew right behind me. I'm going to slide in here. Okay. I'm going to head right. on over Slaughterhouse. Woo, perfect timing. Looks like you guys are about to do some work. This looks tasty. All right. Are you happy with the way everything turned out so far? No, I think everything's looking great. Travis? I got robbed in ribs, but other than that. We're yeah, excellent, excellent. <laughs> I may have to hop up here. I had to stand on a cooler with Tim. Well, that's too tall here. You guys aren't as tall as him. <laughs> All right, so I see you've got your flat here. You got a point. Is it in foil or is it on the pit? The point's already cut up in the burn ends. It's on the on the pit right now. What, what are you doing when you're putting them back on the pit? You trying to caramelize that sauce? The sauce just a little. You don't want to char them or anything, just tit no. tack up that sauce? No, I want them back off there pretty fast. Oh, cool. Ooh, that looks tender. Right on. All right, he's cutting back some of the fat cap here that's on the underside of that, br underside of that brisket. That's what keeps it moist during the cooking process. Oh, you cooked two. This one's the one right here. You like this one better? It feels better. What, is it just more tender? Yeah, it's got that yellow feel. I think got that wiggle to it. So if you got, if you end up having this one feels better, this one tastes better, what, what, what are you going to do? Taste. Taste over tenderness? All day long. But typically if you, typically if you do it, if it, if it tastes right, your texture's usually right. They go hand in hand. Very seldom. It always does. People don't think about that. If it ain't cooked right, it ain't gonna taste right. Man, you just see the moisture just gliding across that knife as you as you that make those cuts. Sense. That's perfect. Are you cooking Wagyu? Yeah, absolutely. I cook Snake River Farms. Let's see how this one slices. Feels good. That one feels better. Try that slice under there, Wade. This one had a little more jiggle on it. Yeah. This one looks a, li a little stiffer. Oh, it's tender. Oh, it is. There you go. Way tender. Too tender? No. You got to think my slices are here. Right now, you're just checking flavor. Which one, Wade? What are you thinking? Did you eat that whole damn slice I cut? He's out. And you just see the moisture hanging inside that thing. Oh, that's crazy. I mean, that thing's. Yeah. So for when we're, we're, I'll get in on that. Oh yeah. Oh. Holy smokes. So from a tenderness factory, you don't want you don't want these things to break apart. All right, you want that slice to hold together when it. So you want to run it. You want to run it to where it'll 
live doing Dude, every, the brisket box right now. Um, we're, we, we're, we're only going to turn in flat. Our, our burn ends didn't turn out quite the way I like it. And I, and I think it, with, my attitude is if they're not great, don't put them in there. They All they can do is hurt you if they're not very good. So we've got about 10 really good slices. Well, we, 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 got, we got the brisket about five minutes ago. We got it sliced. We got it back in its own juices. Right. And it's going to sit there, and we're just going to shingle it and doctor it up a little bit and so, get it going. Do, so for competition, do you leave your brisket whole or do you separate? No, we, we definitely separate it. We started doing that in our restaurants a long time ago. And I go back 25 years cooking and we used to leave them whole and separate them. It's just, there's, I think you can get a lot more seasoning. You get a lot more, a lot more bark, a lot more smoke ring if you separate them out. So we're cooking, you know, we're cooking fast. So we're, we get them kind of small. We only really, we're, you know, we're taking that 18 pound brisket and only putting about 10 pounds on the cooker. Cause we're not going to, we're getting rid of all the stuff we don't want to turn in. And are you leaving fat on there at all, or just really taking it all the way down? We, we leave a pretty good fat cap on the one side. We cook that down. We cook okay. we, we, we cook all of our briskets on our can, ah. on our on our gateway drum, and we let we let that fat kind of get hot and render and drip back down and come up. And then when we get then we get done with it, we flip it upside down and kind of just plane it off. It almost scrape you almost scrape it off with a spoon. There's there's not very much. We leave about we leave about a quarter inch on there. Because you want that flavor. Exactly. When it, you want the flavor coming back. Exactly. Up the Espe especially fat. on that can. It's 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 the drippings that hit that hit those coals and come back up that right. give it that really neat flavor. It's like a steak almost. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Very good. Okay, so well, I know you're we'll get, we'll get on our box. Back. Yep. So if you guys want to get in, I think well, pulling it out of the hot box. We've got the turn in box. We've got sauce on his burner because he's wants that warm so when it goes on top of that brisket that it's he's got a glove up, safety first. All kinds of tools that we use to keep things warm and hot. So what you're gonna see over here is he's pulling those slices, already sliced, but right out of some of the au jus that he's kept, some of the sauce, and he's laying them down inside that. Looks like he's doing parsley. It's kale. From here, I couldn't quite tell. JB, you're a, you are a, a master. So JB's gonna wipe up, make sure there's no Excess around the box. See, look at, he's got little Q-tips. That's, Spongy. it's sponge, that's fast, is it? I'm gonna put my eyeliner on with that. That looks great. Those are some fancy tools. So he is, Jeff's gonna make sure that these are shingled for each of the judges. How many slices do you think you're gonna put in? We'll put, we'll put seven, we'll put at least eight or nine. At least eight or nine. Have to have six slices, that's, that's what we have to have. If they happen to be together, by accident, didn't get cut all the way through, that's considered one portion, and someone could be dinged if they don't get full six individual portions. So a lot of times guys will go through and make sure they put. All right, I turned around from Travis Clark here, and we got Brad with getting basted. He's, he's uh, slicing up a brisket right now. So you've done a little work here. This was quite a bit bigger when you first pulled it out of the, uh, the foil pack, and yeah. you've trimmed it down. What, what, what? Down, man. I, I, I cook it. Some people try to size it for the box like Travis over there, second place brisket Travis over there. And uh, uh, I, I think the ends get dry. Yeah. So I'd rather take the hit in appearance and have, have the chance that they, the judge bites off the end of it instead of taking the bite where I want them to take it. So I end up docking the ends. So you, do you, you slide either way just based on the, the feel or you just, no, I'll just flopping look, it off wherever? I'll, no, I'll look where I want it. You know, sometimes you've got a little fat line running through there. Sometimes yeah. you got some other stuff going on. So uh, I'll, I'll judge it based on where I want them to eat it. Man, that looks what are, you, what are you thinking as far as the tenderness feel on the knife? Uh, oh, man, it's slicing just right. I've actually cooked two of them, and this is the second one. I, the first one, I don't know how I'm going to pick which one I'll put in, so I don't know <laughs> if I can turn these in twice or do what. But, uh, yeah, they're both cooked really well. So these Snake River Farms briskets are great. So I look, These are your slices. Are you cooking points as well? Are you going to be points. going for burn-ins? Yeah, man, I'm, I'm going to try. Uh, I went ahead and cubed up my points, and I was pretty happy with them. So we're, we're, we've got them setting on there, got a little sauce caramelizing on top of them. And we're going to see where they end up. If we can get them in a the box, we'll put them in there, man. i got to make some points. I, that 
still still a little stung by 10th place chicken. Let me tell you, that. I, 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 judges, I'm coming for you. 10th place chicken is no way. Well, we'll find out here in a little bit what happens with pork. You may you may be on the rise. It looks it looks like the uh, there's there's a, a little disparity. The teams that were well, were up top in chicken and come back down in ribs, and it, it's anybody's ball game still. Except for that shake and bake team, which I, I taught him everything you know. So it's <laughs> it's 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 right that that happened. But that shake and bake team, you know, it's. Uh, you know, yeah, anything, anything can happen, and we're going to make a comeback, that's for sure. So oh, well, you just, I just noticed you dropped these all here. Yeah. Is, this the, is this the pan juices, the au jus yeah, that came out? the juice we cooked it in. Did you put anything in the foil packet, or is this all the natural juices well, that came yeah, out of that yeah, beef? A little bit of the uh, Blues Hog uh, Bold and Beefy mixed with some water, Ooh. a little bit of beef consomme, put it in there, and, uh, and, that, and then the juices that rendered out of the brisket, and there we go. Nice, and that just mixes with all that natural Snake River Farms Wagyu beef flavor. It does. Makes it, makes it yummy. So, Delicious. Yeah. I think we're in good shape today, man. We'll see. Hopefully the hopefully the judges get this one right and we'll yeah. take home the brisket one. <laughs> All right, well you got your burn ends on here. How long before yeah, you pull those off? Pull you going on now? Yeah, we get ready back here in a minute. All right. All right, he's going to the pit now. The judges don't see. Yeah, we don't we don't we don't want to have any sauce pooled up or anything like that. You don't want to have any of the sauce pooled up. Yeah. You want to make sure that it's glistening. Exactly. JB's coming back in and, and cleaning up the splatter and the over. And now we got tweezers. Some of the little bitty pieces that I don't like. There's some little pieces of fat that kind of got stuck on there. I'm probably I'm probably noticing stuff nobody else would. But it is dark, and I have my sunglasses on, so I don't know what I'm really, really looking at, frankly. Yeah, but those judges. That's the thing is the judges. They're going to open up that clamshell. They're going to take a look. They want to know. They're, they're going to they're going to take about you know three or four seconds. They're going to take 20 seconds and determine the, the taste, the, the, the appearance score for all five or six of the entries. So grab that little piece down there, JB. So Meg, I think that's about it. Meg. That looks that's gorgeous. That, that's beautiful it's beef. And you're going to stick this inside of a yep. insulation. And then Ryan's going to well, trot. Side. That's beautiful. Thank you for letting us see that. Yeah. Wow. Appreciate it. Good luck. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. over there buddy I'm gonna put some on there that so you're just looking forward to you know go over your finger which that one's gonna break but go over your finger and then you want to be able to you know play with it and then, then just pull apart nicely so draping over your finger just giving you an idea of the tenderness you tenderness. it breaks and you're not even gonna use it no right absolutely the it breaks it's overdone basically and if, it, if it goes straight then it's not cooked enough straight you might want to slice it thinner <laughs> that's for sure no doubt about it oh man well this definitely looks juicy so let's see what you how you're gonna add some sauce here add a little sauce a little juice and then we're going to hit her with our little bit of our finishing powder. And then we're going to test them. So this is brisket we just sliced. How you doing, Brad? It's pretty, pretty good. Pretty good. good. And we got our other one. It's amazing how you can t cook two briskets side by side, it look identical, and then get two totally different flavors out of them. So are you getting that? Yeah, no, and the flavors are pretty pretty similar. Uh, this one's got a little more moisture in it. so. Um, I'm, I'm liking that one I sliced uh, first better. It's got just a little bit better moisture in there, and I'm, I'm, I'm happy with it, so I think I'm going to run with that one. How many of these slices are you going to put in the box? Are you going to put all these? I'll tell you what. I might put them all in there. Yeah. I might load it up. What do I got here? I got about, looks like, 13 slices or so. I might go for lucky. A big old brick of bi brisket. Lay, lay it in there, man. You ever run just burn ends? I've never done just burn ends, no. Never had to? You, you just cook brisket that well? I don't know. I've never had the courage to. <laughs> I've, I've had the times where I wanted to, that's for sure. But uh, no, I've never had to before. Man, so we we're at 127 here. Yep. So when, when, at what point do you actually start building the box? Right now. Hey, David, will you grab me that, uh, there's a butchula down in there? I got my new helper, 913 Barbecue, David McAllister. Making him bend over and do stuff. Bethany's mad because he doesn't normally work at his site. <laughs> He's working twice as hard down here for you. He's working too hard. <laughs> so. What I do is I just make myself a little beef tower. You. Okay, let's go. You tell us when we're, he'll tell us when we're live. We are here with Johnny Trigg. So honored to have you in Kansas City. Thank you. Loving having Thank you here. This is such a cool event. You've got some of the top teams in the country. Absolutely. Who do you want to beat? Well, there's any number of them. There's, there's 12 of us here, and I want to start with number one all the way down to number 11. I love it. I love it. What, what, was, what was your best category today? What were you feeling? 
Well. We got a couple of the scores in. Yeah, I didn't do any good in Rio. Finished last. Terrible. My no, head. you didn't finish last. Yeah, I did. Aww. Yeah, I did. 11. And, uh, no, chicken. 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 Chicken, chicken. okay. And then I moved up a notch in chicken. In the, in the ribs in a one in more the, notch, yeah. Right there, so pork, yeah. we have it, pork and brisket we have. It. I feel good about the brisket, but. I heard old. good things about your brisket, too. Well, I did. Did what? Reputation preceded yourself on that brisket. Oh, okay. People were telling me it was real good. Okay. Very good. And uh, you're cooking on a jambo? Yeah, absolutely, that yellow dude right there. Yeah. The jambo. I have three of them. You have three of them. I had the second one that Jamie ever built. Really? He and I are real good friends. That's incredible. Yeah. That's incredible. Well, we are waiting for those pork results. I don't know if we've gotten them yet. Okay. We'll let you know how you finished. Okay. You just got the brisket turned in. Yes, ma'am. And I want to know, do you cook your brisket whole or do you separate it? I cook it whole. You cook it whole? Yeah. I like trim a true it down. Texan. I trim it around the burn end, the, flat, uh, the point. I trim it down. So I'm, all I have to do is just cut it. Do you but do I you? leave it attached to the, to the flat. Do you uh, turn in burn ends ever? Yes. You do. Yes. All the time. If they taste, if they taste good, if they, they taste don't, good. don't they'll kill you. How how about the final final glaze? You do any au jus? You do any sauce? I do sauce. Sauce. Uh, no au jus. No. Very when good. you put au jus on there, you've taken all your spice flavor out. Of, you wash your spice flavor out. You wash your. That's fascinating. You yeah. wash your spice flavor out. You're back out. to just plain, plain beef old again. roast beef. Roast beef. Okay. That's my opinion. I love that. Mm. There's Miss mm -hmm. Trish over there. How you doing? Doing good. You're tired. This has been a long day. It has been. It's been a long day. It has been. All right. Okay. All right. Well, we greatly appreciate you. Good luck. Thank you. All right. I'm here with Dirt Road. They're finishing up their brisket right now. Looks like we're doing some, uh, maybe some last minute adjustments. How'd everything go? Um, I think the brisket's pretty good. We uh, just had a little bit of wind, so we're trying to clean the box up last minute here. Yeah, everybody's dealing with that wind. It kicked yeah. up here. We got some shade all of a sudden. I think the temperature dropped about 15 degrees on you. Does that, that make any difference on how you're building this box? You're trying. I know you want to keep as much heat in, inside that brisket as possible. Yeah, any, any second it sets out here, it's losing heat. But we had to take a couple burn-ins out because we had the wind shifted around and we lost a couple. Watch out, kids. Oh, we, do we have results? We have results. I know I know. you guys are in uh -oh. the middle of, of, of brisket here. So, so we're going to start out here. 11th place in pork. Smoking triggers. Number 10, Boomerang. And in ninth place in pork, we've got Sugar Fire Smokehouse representing Baylor. And then we've got in eighth place for pork slaps. All right, here we go. In seventh place, West Virginia is Old Virginia Smoke. Number six, we got Clark Crew coming in on the pork. In fifth place, Kansas State getting basted. Right in there. Number fourth spot, we got Shake and Bake. In third place, representing the University of Kansas, Fergalicious Barbecue. Hey, have you heard your name yet? <laughs> no, okay, well, let's talk about second place in that pork. Representing Kansas University, Slaughterhouse Five. Oh. Ah! And our pork champion, Dirt Road Dirt Barbecue. Dirt Road! How pork does it feel? Champion. Uh, pretty good, because I had such a rough year in the National Barbecue League last year, so it's good to get a little redemption. All right, so that, what did you get in chicken? Uh, I think we were eight. Eight. So that's eight, and then a first, and a first. So where, where did we thought maybe Shake and Bake was the leader after the first two categories? Where did he end up? He's in four. He's in four, so, so it's it's anybody's. He's, anybody. he's got pretty pretty good consistent finishes though, so it's gonna be tight. What, so what do you think about that brisket you just sent in? You think that's what's gonna put you over the top? I thought brisket was our best best category, but that's usually what does you in. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just because you feel good about it doesn't mean the judges uh, are going to react the same way. Yeah, absolutely. All right. I think I do remember we talked about all the perils that you were going to have, and this was going to be an amazing comeback story. I think yeah. we, I think we might be there. Yeah, Megan called it. <laughs> That's the way the cookie crumbles. So congratulations. Actually, you know what? Karen doesn't know yet. Karen doesn't no. know. So we, we probably got a couple more minutes before she gets back, and we can deliver her the good news. We'll let her guess. <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right. Congratulations. We'll see how the brisket comes out. You turn in burn ins? What'd you turn in? Yeah, we put in slices and burn ins. Great. All right. Very good. Woo. Excellent. Good luck to you guys. All right. I'm Brad getting basted. Uh, we're going to tour the bus, tour the little cube back there behind it. Let's go have a look. Pretty much everything on this beauty is broken. 
So, you know, it's all barbecue equipment. We're very good on buying stuff, very bad on maintenance. So, uh, the step doesn't work, but we've got a replacement, so. Got the air conditioner running. Got the bed folded out for the kids. The uh, very important Hello Kitty blanket. That's what I usually end up sleeping with. Uh, you got the captain's chair right there. We drive down the road. The uh, broken refrigerator. Yeah, it's still hot. Come on back here, we got the bedroom. Beautiful. Shower, all the good stuff you need. That's the bus. That's where we all sleep. We usually have, I don't know, we'll probably have eight people crammed in this stupid thing this weekend. I'm not even sure who all's coming down, but a bunch of kids and everybody else. That's the cooking happens back here in the cube. You can see my fine job that I've done screwing this thing on. It fell off one time driving down the road, so it's got a couple of brackets. This is it, camera, workspace, another table, and then out here we got the patio, it's got the drums, four drums. T-Mac, turn down the radio! T-Mac, you get shitty neighbors, you watch out for that. Turn it down for a second. Yeah, you can turn it up in a second, I'm showing everybody my beautiful trailer, it's taking a long time, we're doing a little tour. T-Mac, everybody. So we just got the drums, just had this four foot deal, I had a two foot extension, so I put the drums on it. That's pretty much it. I mean, it's a great cooker to have on your driveway or on your patio because you can get home from work, say, 5 o'clock, light the cooker, rub your ribs, put your ribs on, and you're eating by 7.30. Most, most cookers, it'll take four hours or more to cook ribs. Gateway drum consistently, two hours, done. So, I mean, you can't ask for anything better. because uh, a friend of mine, we used to do construction on the side nights and evenings, and we were up on Barner of putting steel on, and uh, somehow he asked my name at McLaw, and he says, are you, are you Irish? I said, well, yeah, there's Irish in my family. He goes, you're the biggest damn leprechaun I ever seen. And then he says, I'm gonna call you Lucky. And he says, from then on, it just stuck. Uh, we started out with barbecue. Our first team name was Pit Crew Barbecue. I was watching NASCAR a lot. I was like, all right, yeah, I'm gonna do something. But it was just kind of boring to us. One day I'm sitting on the couch watching Talladega Nights movie. He's banging around in the kitchen doing dishes or something. And I turn around and I holler, shake him, mate. He's like, that's our new team name. I was like, what? He's like, we're changing our team name to Shake and Bake Barbecue. I was like, oh, we just got all new shirts with Pit Crew. I was like, whatever. Yeah, she didn't care. We only yeah. did like two or three a year at the time. And at the time, there was like, Another pit crew had come, like started using that name, and then we were the first shake and bake too. Yeah. So, <laughs> for that. Yeah. Team name actually is the gentleman that asked me. He started the team. Um, I want to take it a little more seriously. He did not. Um, I asked uh, to start my own team, and he actually said, "Why don't you take the team name?" And then uh, just he never kicked me off. So that's how I came up with team name. Real creative, you know. <laughs> So we started cooking in 2012, and uh, the first contest we did, we had a week, week and a half notice, had a good buddy of mine, a team named Good Rub, he also cooks on Gateway Drum Smokers now, but uh, he ended up pulling out because he was going, we were cooking the Rotten Ribs in Springfield, he wanted to cook the contest in Jefferson City. And so our first, very first contest we cooked as a Good Rub because we could not get the uh, team name changed. So that was our very first contest, got three uh, meat calls, got seventh overall out of 70 teams, and we were hooked. So after that, we're like, well, we can't keep competing with his team name. So we sat there and kept, sat around, and we had, I don't know, 15 or 20 names just brainstorming. You know, oh, we're doing this. We're, we had all kinds of good stuff down, and then my wife just yells out, get and baste it, and that was immediately the winner. So our next contest we did in June, had to sit there and watch this where I met Mr. Shear. Had to sit there and watch him win the contest as get and baste it.
All right, welcome back to the National Barbecue League. We are in the live stream from the Big 12 Big Q presented by Prairie Fresh. We've got those pork scores. We're gonna go back over those and we're starting to see a pattern here. We're starting to see some front runners. So we'll talk a little bit about those. Tell us a little bit about who took uh, what place here. Yeah, so our overall winner for the pork category was Dirt Road Barbecue, who is also our rib category champion. So we Woo! might be seeing uh, one of our winners emerge right there. He came in, uh, I think, eighth place in chicken. That's right. Yeah, so remember, this is we're talking cumulative scores that add up across all categories. So. Not, not just winning, sometimes consistency across all four of those categories yep. will be what gets you there. Yeah, we, we were excited to see the Slaughterhouse <laughs> bounce back a little bit. Oh, we TV some, Joe. Something, something slappy happening hey. behind us here. Creepy. <laughs> So he's just he's just hurt. He's hurt that he had a, a lower sco lower score in here. Let's just talk about eighth place slaps over there uh, in this pork <laughs> score. So second place came in. Slaughterhouse Five came through in second place um, on the pork scores. Yeah, and they were our first place chicken winners. So we may have another contender there as well. Uh, I think their ribs were a little bit lower. So yep. that's same with Dirt Road here. Yep. So we might be seeing some evening out. Yep. Fergalicious came in strong, third place. So that's a couple of high scores yeah, for them. A good They're right for them. there. Fourth place was Shake and Bake. This might be Mr. Consistency here. I think he's he been two, a three, two four three four across every category. That's typically what will take in a, a, a contest like this. So uh, you never know, though. We've still got brisket to come. Yep. We've got uh, Getting Basted came in fifth place, solid right there in the middle of the pack. Yep. And in sixth place, we had Clark Crew Barbecue out of Oklahoma. We had seventh place, Old Virginia Smoke, coming in from the D.C. area here to Kansas City, cooking seventh. And uh, Dancing Joe behind us here, he <laughs> was coming in at eighth pl in eighth place. He's representing TCU, Slaps Barbecue. And for those pork category, <laughs> number nine, Sugar Fire Smokehouse. And in tenth place was Boomerang Barbecue, representing Texas Tech. Yep. And in 11th place, Smoke and Triggers pork uh, score came in right there at number 11. So that's that's a wrap on on pork. We are waiting for those brisket scores. We kind of call it the great equalizer. Yeah comes down to brisket a lot of times for these contests. Yeah, not only is it the last category that these judges are going to get, but in barbecue, brisket is considered the hardest barbecue meat, and it's it's going to come down to the brisket scores here. It is the it's the least forgiving. It y you got to cook it all the way tender. So I think we're going to peel off here and yeah, let's uh, pop talk in to a here with dirt. Teams. Let's see what Dirt Road's thinking. I, I bet I bet they're getting uh, maybe a little anxious, thinking that they're bringing home the grand champion. What do you think? How'd you like your brisket? I, I thought the brisket was good, but. Like I, like you're saying, I, I little little nerves, but I think it's I think Tim with shake and bake, probably probably in the lead. Yeah. Uh, well, he's he was uh, two, three, four. I think you've got first, first, and eighth. Yeah. Right. So it sounds like it's going to come down to points, which we have no clue as to how those points added up. We, we got to remember it's appearance, taste, tenderness. You're scored in each one of those, and that gives us a point total somewhere between zero and 180 for each category. Right. You're looking for 180 points in each of your categories. Yeah, and, and the good thing, chicken's usually where we're the tightest in the scores. So it, the best case scenario is my lowest, the eighth, was in chicken. So just hopefully that was a, we were all grouped tightly together there. But. Yeah, and, and looking at brisket, you're you're a pretty good brisket cook, right? Coming out of uh, the American Royal Invitational with first place brisket. That's a world championship event. Were you brisket team of the year last year or these are the year before? Uh, year before we were runner up. So I, I know you can cook a good brisket. It looked look nice going in. We'll, we'll see what the judges here think at the uh, Big 12 Big Q. I think Megan is over here with Joe. Okay, that's enough, Ryan. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for talking, buddy. Hey, we've got Joe here. Joe, you've won this whole thing before, haven't I've, you? I've won this contest before, yes. I've never actually finished outside the top three of this contest, so... That might change today, but we'll see what happens. There's a lot of good cooks here. Okay, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that's changing today. You uh, think so? No, I don't know. We, yeah. we really don't know we what don't those know scores. Yet. How'd you so, feel on your brisket? Uh, brisket, I thought, was really good today, except for I was like 10 minutes early. Uh, I don't know. I just had magic boxing fingers, and uh, the world came together perfectly, and the cosmos aligns. There was a rainbow. I don't know what happened, but it was early, and so we had to walk really slow to turn ins. You wanted that to be as hot as possible. That's what was happening. Yeah, I wanted it really hot, and uh, I noticed my guy was walking, and there was nobody else walking, and so I told him, hey, walk real slow, please. Yeah. So we'll see what happens. But flavor-wise, it was good. good. Yeah. And you, I, I, just out of curiosity, did you keep your brisket whole? Did you separate it? What's your, what's the plan of attack on a brisket? Yeah, I keep my brisket whole, and then I separate after the. Uh, in between chicken and ribs. So once I start boxing chicken and ribs, I separate the point from the flat then, then I put the point back on whole. Once it gets the sauce set, then I cube it up and turn it into uh, burn-ins. 
Do you turn in burn-ins today? I put burn-ins in the box. They were right as rain. Right as rain. Well, we greatly appreciate your time here today. No Obviously, we don't know what those scores are going to be. We'll Not let yet. you know. We'll see. Sounds like we're going to have the results here pretty soon. So, all right. Thanks. All right. I've got Tim with Shake and Bake here. So, let's recap a little bit. It was second place chicken, third place ribs, fourth place pork. Is that how it went down? That's how it went. We're getting worse as we go. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think about the brisket? You think you can, uh, is that going to push you through to be the overall grand champion here? I don't know. It's going to come down to brisket right now because I know Murphy's got uh, two first and an eighth in yeah. chicken. So if I had to guess, we're neck and neck right now. Um, and he's a solid brisket cook. So um, I will say I thought our brisket was really good. Um, the burn ends were, were pretty nice. We did a traditional. Uh, kind of old school traditional burn in. We we got them charred up at the end and stuff like that. Kind of, kind of uh, went straight to the heart of KC with that one. So is that different than you normally do? Um, you know, I, I, I do it sometimes. Uh, sometimes my burn ins just aren't usable, so I don't mess with them. So uh, I got my buddy Boat right here. He, he's trying to redeem himself off that pellet uh, <laughs> mishap that actually. Pellets. What? We got second. Chicken yeah, we got that. second. You only cost us first, so that's <laughs> that's not not as bad as I thought it was going to be. So I give you some credit. Yeah, well, you, you mentioned Murphy over there since he had two first places. Let's yeah. not count out Jeff over here with yeah. Slaughterhouse Five because yeah, he took a first and a second. Did he really? Yeah, he a first and second. I don't yeah. know what else he got. So yeah, I would say it's it's definitely uh, anybody's game at yeah, this it's point. Going to come so. down to the points. We should be getting brisket results any time now. Yeah. So let's. I think we're going to head back over to Megan. I'm All right. Nervous. Thank you very much. We'll see what happens here in a few minutes. All right, buddy. Thanks. <laughs> All right. So we went from the tallest man in barbecue to the most Italian man in barbecue. Is that? <laughs> Is that, the, is that how we're going down here? The Italian stallion right here, baby. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, uh, speaking of that, how was your brisket? Tell me about the beef. We felt really good about it. Felt really good about it. The tenderness was there. The flavor was there. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, that's all I can say about yeah. it. The judges are going to make that decision, so we'll see what they come back with. Yeah, we don't have those scores quite yet, but we've got those pork scores. You came in third. Awesome, pork. Man. Yes. So have, you, have you competed in a Big 12, Big Q before? Is this the first time down in this in front of the Sprint Center? This is our first time competing in the Big 12, Big Q. Yes. Yeah. Yep. You were you were with the National Barbecue League last year. How how was that experience? Are you excited for this year? Oh yeah, it's, it, I mean the National Barbecue League is awesome because it's promoting barbecue, um, but we get to have fun and the camaraderie of all the teams and. Uh, I mean, the skill level that's just within this area right here is unbelievable. Um, and just an opportunity to cook against these guys is a privilege. Yeah, that's exciting. Well, we are waiting for those brisket scores. Um, I, what did you, going into this today, what, what was your best category? And then now seeing these results live, is it lining up with what you thought or is it a complete surprise? Uh, I mean, it's, it's lining up pretty well I mean I didn't feel that great about chicken and we finished ninth and uh, felt really good really good about the ribs and finished second and pork I was right in the middle so we got it we got a good call there now we just got to hope brisket brings it home yeah. all right do we have anyone else that we're gonna go talk to is Jason uh, set up over here all right I think we're gonna we're gonna head over to okay. sugar fire yeah. thanks right. so much yep. Richard uh, or, yeah you want me to take that off <laughs> Oh, sure? all right. So I'm here with Sugar Fire. We just got done with the uh, brisket turn-ins. It looked like things maybe got a little intense over here. He's messy. <laughs> He's messy? He's splattering. It's, well, it's all... well, you know, we always said that it's not good barbecue unless you have to take a shower afterwards. Yeah. That's right? That's right? They say that about a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> so how did your brisket turn out today? Can you give us we a little... Won. They already what? told us. Yeah. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah. Champions. Excellent. Well, we'll... Uh, already put us in the Barbecue Hall of Fame. <laughs> Just on based well, on we'll ask, we'll ask Johnny about that. Here, see what he says. I, we're, no. we're, we feel pretty confident with what we did. We don't think we came in first, but we're hoping for a good call. I mean, we did as best we could. We didn't turn in burn ends because we, we, we did them, but they were too tight, so we took them yeah. out. And, yeah. So we're hoping that the, are we, we're really confident with our brisket, we're hoping that the fact that we didn't turn in burn ends doesn't really knock us down. Yeah. We've had a, several folks that I've talked to were, were web, debating whether or not they wanted to turn in burn in. So you made the decision to, to no burn not. You're not, you didn't. Well, we were also it. between shake and bacon and slaps. We tried theirs and they were and so we were much like, better no. than ours. It's like <laughs> decided not there to. was no point to even attempt it. You know, uh, that's so, all right. That's all yeah. right. So how, how do you feel overall being part of the uh, the first? Well, we love it. We just national didn't barbecue come, league event here. We just didn't want to come in last because we only do this once or twice a year. Yeah. So and, and we got a fifth place and we got ninth twice and then there's 11 teams so that's not last it's not good 
So you guys run one of the biggest barbecue restaurant chains out of St. Louis, right? Sugar yes. Fire Smokehouse. Yep. Did you do anything different today coming into the competition side? No, you're not as comfortable or that's not something you guys do as much? Or well, are you sticking more to what you guys know? What we do in the restaurant is has nothing to do with yeah, what we do a here for... It's 100 times different. Yeah, yeah. it's totally different. So, so it's a we're, bo different. we're mostly, honestly, stealing. Um, we're just looking at... Joe and Tim are both really helpful with this, so... They just uh, kind of tell us what they're, we're just watching what they're doing, basically copying both of them. Yeah. So, but hey, we're not coming in last, so. No, you guys should. Anyone right? here gets beat by us, they should be ashamed. Well, you know what? Everybody here is champions. These are all barbecue <laughs> yeah, I superstars. Yeah, so I know. Yeah. It, it doesn't matter where you come yeah. up. Everybody's put out good food. I've got to taste everybody's food here today, and it's all been great. And there, it, we would have won the, the, the chef challenge. Like, nobody had any chance. <laughs> nobody has any chance in that. Like, we'll win that every time. Excellent. But it got axed or whatever. So, we're going to just take that as a victory. <laughs> But we'll it up as a has win. anyone else claimed victory for that yet? Not yet. You can okay. have it. We're the you can have it. For the pork chop. All right. Yeah. Well, well, thank you guys. I think we should have brisket results coming any minute now, so we will Do you come know back. Right? And, no, not, we don't. If we're not above you know. ninth. Just you know. don't tell no, us. No, I don't. They're they're still tabulating them. They'll run right. them in here, and then you'll you will come back and let you guys scream and, and jump up just and down for your first place. Uh, <laughs> Call like... twice if we came in last. All right. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Good luck. All right, we're over here with Boomerang. We got Sarah and Matt. So, pork scores came back. Man, they were brutal. Brutal. Tenth place. Yeah. Tell me. <laughs> uh, you can't run and hide, man. <laughs> That's the hard part. I'm hyping IKEA at some no. Point. Well, well, t tell me. You. It, it is all about. Every single person here is a championship yes. cook. Yes. Somebody has to finish in those in those spots. Tell me, where did you land all year last year? Where, where were some of your top, what, you know, you were like first in the country in a couple spots, so. We were second place overall in pork. 10th place today. 10th place. And then what about the ribs? First. First in ribs. First in chicken. Yeah, first in chicken. You know, it's so. Like a, it's like a batting average. Yeah. It's, um, you don't go out and win every week, so the, the average is, is what you're looking for. So sometimes, sometimes, some weeks are good, some weeks are not so good. Would you would you think about what you put in for your pork? Were you compared to what everybody else was putting in? Was it a similar style? You think, or yours different? Probably, probably about the same. About the same. Uh, Saw Joe's box, and yeah. it was pretty about the same. Yeah. Yep. You know, Sarah was talking about the fact she doesn't have a sink out here. Man, I don't sink. I need to <laughs> wash dishes. It's just it's awful. Look at it. It's like no. sauce well, everywhere. Sauce well, media. and I saw that you had things parsing out, you know, by category, by chicken in each of your boxes. Do you have duplicate, you know, equipment in each one of those just so you know what you're using? Yes, I've got everything sorted out to what goes into that category. Chicken, everything in chicken is chicken and ribs and pork and brisket. Yep. From double of, even if we use it in another box, it still goes in there just for extra. Did you guys do any practicing over the over the over the off season, or did you guys just roll right into this? We never had an off season. That's maybe right. like three or four <laughs> weeks. <laughs> That's right. That's what I was getting at. They didn't have an off season. We really appreciate it. Excited to get those brisket scores, and we'll see where you land. Alrighty, Thank sounds you. good. Thank you. I'd say I'd say I'd say Tim's in the driver's seat. All right, I'm down here under the Slaughterhouse Five tent. We've got Travis. I think he was checking in to see how Jeff did. What do you guys think? How'd you cook go today? Uh, you know, I thought mine was really good. I guess the judges are thinking differently. But I hey, you never know really how that's going to turn out. Yeah. So, Jeff, you are quite possibly in contention here. You got a first, a second, 11th and ribs may may end up hurting you, but it could come down to brisket. Yeah, I, I, I thought our ribs were great. The judges didn't. That's fine. Uh, I'm not as happy about my brisket, though, so I don't think uh, I don't think I'm sitting very good right now. But we, we might get surprised. Travis liked his brisket. Yeah, I was going to say, it sounded like hey, you were telling him how much hey, you liked your yeah, brisket. Yeah, you were there for that yeah, one. Yeah, it was, it was pretty ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, it was insane. Yeah, he had one that stood out definitely yeah. over the other. It looked pretty yeah. good. I don't know, though, Brad, I turned around and saw Brad's. He had a pretty good-looking brisket as I well. I wouldn't tell him that. <laughs> Did you teach him everything he knows? <laughs> well, we could tell people that. <laughs> I, so cook, who's... I, cook, I cook his recipe. So, oh, 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 there you go. His, yeah. a, lot, a lot of your recipes. Yeah. Yeah. But he's probably changed it a lot since he told me. It's always no? a moving target, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. So just based on what you know right now, only we don't know scores, we just know placements. Who's your money on? Who do you think's running away here? Shake and bake. I, I would say uh, I would say shake and bake, then dirt road. That's how I would say it. Shake and bake and dirt road. So we still don't know brisket results. I yeah. think they should. Oh, oh, oh. We do brisket know results the brisket hot results. off the press. Hot, hot off All the right. presses. All right. All right. You want to? We'll start here. Starting. <laughs> this is our brisket category. So to remind everybody that the scoring here is cumulative. So we're adding up points 
from each of the categories, and this is what's going to ultimately determine our grand champion here. So starting in 11th place, representing the University of Kansas, Fergalicious Barbecue. <laughs> Okay, and yep, number 10th, we got Sugar Fire Smokehouse in 10th place for brisket. And in 9th place, it's Kansas State getting basted. And in 8th place, we've got representing KU, Slaughterhouse 5. That's about right. And in 7th place, representing Iowa State, Dirt Road Barbecue. All right, here we go. We got number 6th place, we got representing West Virginia, we got Old Virginia Smoke. And in 5th place, Mr. Consistency. Shake and bake. Right there in fifth place. Number fourth, we got smoking triggers on that brisket. Fourth place. Nice Third place, Texas Tech Boomerang Barbecue. Nice job, Boomerang. Okay, second place for that brisket, we got Slaps Barbecue. All right, and number one in brisket, representing the great state of Oklahoma, Clark Crew Barbecue. Congratulations. You liked it? Yeah, the burn ins were money. Yeah, it, was, it looked nice and juicy. You gotta run them in Kansas City, man. You gotta do it. Yeah. <laughs> now, did you change anything today, or did no, you just run your normal I brisket? Never, I run the same thing every week. If you uh, change something and it hits one time, you don't know if it was luck or not. So I've run the same thing. Excellent. So Jeff, that now that we come back around, that puts you with an eighth place. Does that change your feelings on who might be the overall champion? Uh, it's gonna. It looks like. Where did Dirt Road finish? What were they in brisket? Brisket Dirt Road was seven. At Shake and bake. Yep. Shake and bake. Shake and bake. Two, three, four, five, right? Two, three, Two, three four, five. five. That's probably solid. You're not beating that. You're not beating that. Well, we'll see. You never know. We don't. We haven't seen the scores yet, so this is going to be a really tight Actually, race. We do right. know. We do know. We do know. Well, let's get it out here. Yeah, we're going to do that soon. All right. Suspense. <laughs> All right. We're cutting. The thing I love about the Snake River Farms American Wagyu is what you get when you get the cross between the Japanese Wagyu, which is known for its marbling, its sweet flavor, and then you combine that with the American traditional beef. And when you combine those two together, you get that deep, meaty flavor from the American beef combined with that sweet marbling, and it creates a unique and extraordinary product.
Prairie Fresh, we have here the overall rankings. So we've gone through each of the categories, chicken, ribs, pork, brisket, and we're ready to find out who the overall reserve and reserve and grand champions are. So, but first, let's recap the winners for each of those categories. Here in the National Barbecue League, chicken, first place went out to Slaughterhouse Five, Jeff Staney representing the Kansas. So congratulations on that chicken call. Jason, who took second or who took Jackson. first place in ribs? <laughs> in first place in ribs was Dirt Road hey. Barbecue representing Iowa State University. And let's just go right back to them because they also took first place in pork. Congratulations. Congratulations. Wow. Yep. That is amazing. And then in brisket, we were waiting for it. Number one Clark Crew Barbecue. There he is, right back here. Brisket. That's right. Brisket came in with a great call. We have not looked at these results, but we have been handed yeah. and entrusted this information. And so we're going to start in 10th place. Uh, or 11th place, 11th. 11th place, and obviously these are all champion pit masters <laughs> against everybody here. Someone still has to come in um, in the end, so. Should we open it up and start? Here we go, I'm a little nervous. I think everybody has a, has a feeling on what, what it was doing. 12th place, 12th place. We, have, oh. we did, we have, we do need to call out. We did lose a team to some, some of the flooding activities going on. So thank you, Porky Butts, we wish you well. Sorry you couldn't be here, but we family activities that needed to take yeah. place. And so here we go. In 11th place, we're bringing in our Texas team, Smoke and Trigger. Coming Big in. Godfather. Thanks, Johnny. All right, in 10th place, representing Baylor, Sugar Fire Smokehouse. Congratulations. In ninth place, we've got representing West Virginia, Virginia, Old Virginia Smoke. Sorry, Old Virginia Smoke. <laughs> And let's see, in eighth place, representing Texas Tech, we got Boomerang Barbecue. Congratulations. Coming in at seventh, we've got K-State's Getting Basted. All right, sixth place, representing the University of Kansas, Fergalicious Barbecue. Sixth place, nice job. All right, in fifth place, we have TCU Slaps Barbecue. Way to go, Slaps. All right, and in fourth place, our brisket champion out of Oklahoma, Clark Crew Barbecue. Congratulations. All right, now we're gonna hit the third spot here and we are gonna give that to Slaughterhouse Five. For the University of Kansas. Congratulations. Congratulations. All right, so now the next two, second place overall, is called the Reserve Grand Champion. So in addition to just the honors of winning the Big 12 Big Q presented by Prairie Fresh, they're also gonna get a check for $1,000. There's a little bit of cash on the line here too. And so our Reserve Grand Champion is Dirt Road, Dirt Road Barbecue. Congratulations, Dirt Road Reserve Grand Champion. That just leaves one team for Grand Champion. <laughs> <laughs> And it's no surprise with the scores coming in, second place, third place, fourth place, and fifth place, we have... Representing Oklahoma State, Shake and Bake Barbecue, Tim Shear, the tallest man in barbecue. Congratulations, that's, that's, that's our grand champion for the Big 12 Big Q. And again, <laughs> that comes with a check of $2,000. So th there's some cash involved in this as well. As Come on up here, time. Tim. We Get on up here, Mr. Mr. Shear. Yeah. You didn't bring our stools or coolers. Now, now you really know how tall we are. Yeah. yeah, so you got you came in second, third, and fourth. Is that right across? I or? did. I got worse as the day went on. That's pretty Well, cool. it's a good thing there were only four categories. Yeah, uh, no. <laughs> what'd you like best today? Uh, I would say I did like the ribs today. I thought the chicken was right on. Uh, yeah, the Clark's brisket was probably the best thing, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> excellent, excellent. Well, this is... No, you yeah, no, you're, All right. You're well, in. thank you very much. We appreciate everybody today. Tim, this is Tim Shear, the grand champion of the Big 12 Big Q Barbecue. All right. We love having you guys along for the ride. We're going to be doing this a lot more in the future. So thanks for playing along with us, and uh, thanks to the National Barbecue League for entrusting us to have some fun here today. Yeah. Thanks again, and we're signing off here from Sprint Center in Kansas City. See ya.